right. Kita Cast is back. Welcome to episode 20. Yeah. How to talking again. Way to come back on 20. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I don't remember how to talk, actually. I've, I've completely forgotten. What are words? <laughs> uh, the person who's completely befuddled here is Nedu. To my right, we've got... I'm only mildly befuddled, but I'm Gary. <laughs> and then to the left... Slightly more befuddled. It's Android. <laughs> so we're all slightly befuddled, oh, at least. Man. No, it's, uh, yeah, we've been away it's, for a while. It's shaking off the, the cobwebs and getting getting yeah. back into the swing of things. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, we just came back from our wintry Christmas break, <laughs> so we're back and refreshed and or very lethargic and ready to get going again. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with lethargic. Yeah, I very heard, lethargic. Holy shit, I did not want to do anything over the Okay, I hurt everywhere, and that's <laughs> just because I ate so much. Anyway, besides what? Uh, yeah, so... Um, major topic for today, and this will take up most of our time, is I uh, just wanted to talk, have a massive spoiler cast about The, the Force Awakens, uh, Episode 7 of Star Wars. Um, if you haven't seen Star Wars, GTFO! Yeah, 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 yeah no, no, absolutely. Don't worry. It's, it's in the thumbnail, it'll be, yeah, we're clearly stating this. Unless you're fine with spoilers. Out yeah. front, right now, mm -hmm. this is going to be full of spoilers for the entire movie, so mm -hmm. if you don't want those, yeah, just press stop right now. Mm -hmm. Or you could just keep listening and, and be awesome anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you'd be like, oh my god, this sounds amazing, I should go see this. Or, unfortunately, I cannot see this at this time, but hopefully soon. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, I honestly, we don't really have a plan. We're just going to kind of dive right into oh, it. Oh, shit. Right, the movie. I, have, I, have a, I have a question at the start here. Yeah, sure. How many times has everyone seen it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh <laughs> I've seen it twice. Okay. Yeah. Once. You're, you've seen it once? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are the young Padawan in, in this. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. We actually, um, the uh, three of us actually, well, with some other people, we all went together on like Christmas night at like 10.45 p.m. at one of the dumpier theaters in the city. But man, it wasn't empty. It was awesome. So, all right, now I have, I have a quick question about that whole situation. Why did you pick that fucking theater? <laughs> because that was the one theater that I knew dependably would not be crazy busy. Because the Pole Park Theater on Christmas is generally just absolutely nuts is it yeah I, yeah I've, I've been there a few yeah, times foreign people who don't celebrate christmas yeah what they do is they watch movies oh mm -hmm. that's like their christmas yeah. kind of thing yeah. so. it's yeah. the thing to do oh, yeah. okay and and same Vital, i've gone there a couple times as well during christmas same thing like it's just usually very crazy slightly less chance of it being as crazy as bull park but generally pretty crazy um and i know that theater does not get very busy you can i mean i don't mind that it's not the best theater but if i want to go see a movie and not be have a ton of people around me yeah. especially if it's a newer release like star wars that's the place to go and for those of you that are listening at home right now <laughs> and that confused. theater that we're talking about um it literally i don't think it has been updated since 1986 no <laughs> it's probably the 90s no, at it, least the, the sound the sound isn't too bad I, they've always updated that yeah I have, but yeah. it is uh you walk down and there's it's ghetto it, it's very ghetto like there's the <laughs> there's the one uh, pathway through the middle mm -hmm. and there's seats on left or right. It yeah. isn't two pathways with yeah. like the seats in the middle and everything and the screen it feels like I, I was at my old house like looking at a 46 inch like projector screen because it was like <laughs> way up high. Oh yeah that was the thing too is it's a very flat theater so mm -hmm. uh, the screen's up high so you can look up and see over everyone's heads. Well mm -hmm. I mean, that just kind of makes your neck sore after a while. <laughs> what and, the? and the screen is way the fuck away, and it's and it's very small compared to... Like, yeah. it's one of those things, it was, a, it was a blast from the past to say, like, I went in there, and I was just like, wow, I forgot how shitty theaters used to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, to give you an idea, it still said Famous Players on it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. cost them way too much to update like, all that stuff. I've never, I, I haven't seen Famous Players yeah. in forever, to be yeah. honest. It's just, they're all cinema yeah. city now. Yeah. No, growing up, I went to that theater all the time, of course, like when I was in, in elementary school and junior high school, and uh, not quite as much, but sometimes in high school as well, just because it was so close. Um, and yeah, like they really haven't updated it since then i'm surprised yeah. they they update all their theaters they've that been one... they've been cramming in like uh what is it D dtx and imax mm -hmm. and and 3d like they've been cramming all this stuff into like yeah. all these these other theaters like mm -hmm. updating them updating the inside the outside yeah. like all that and then this one which is owned by them mm -hmm. they haven't done anything to it they do not get nearly enough traffic to like maybe they would justify. if they updated their maybe theater maybe they would but sometimes, honestly like that place just is not nearly as busy as some of the others so i honestly don't think they sometimes it's better it. to actually just roll with like 
an older, smaller place and just make what you can off it. Yeah. Because like the profits that you make are actually like still gonna be. I wish. Profits. I wish what they did there. I wish what they would do because they have those old screens as that older feel. Is they should do what I think the park theater used to do, where if they would only. show older movies. Yeah. Like oh my God. you could go watch Jurassic Park and Die Hard and yeah. Terminator mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That would be awesome. Pay like two fifty to go see a movie and mm-hmm. and yeah, and show those older flicks because then it's be like it'd be kind of like back in the day. That's what it was like watching that. But mm-hmm. um, nostalgia theater. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nostalgia kind of thing. theater. Or yeah. reserve one of them but for that or something. Yeah. Because of how the park theater ended up, like it went under. So it's obviously not a business plan that's gonna work uh, no no but that's the thing is they have multiple theaters there so they could maybe dedicate yeah. one to to showing those yeah but anyways we digress yeah yes. no more sidebar <laughs> i've got a sidebar to your sidebar no, no, that sidebar had margins the size of plain landing strips <laughs> it sure did sure did but yeah so we've all seen it and um basically i think it's safe to say we really all, all three of us really enjoyed it I don't know about Gary. He only saw it once. So. No. I really liked it. <laughs> no, I liked it yeah. so much I saw it once. It was, <laughs> suffice to say, it was an excellent movie. We all thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so kind of, I don't know, I guess we will yeah. fire off and kind of say what we what we liked about it to, to mm-hmm. begin with. Um, yeah, I guess overall, my, my thought going into it was like, I hope... Uh, there is no Jar Jar Binks in this film. Not not the literal Jar <laughs> yeah. Jar Binks. I just mean yeah, no, that like, character, yeah. air quotes, that yeah, ruins that. the movie, basically, because mm-hmm. he's just so crammed in there for comic relief or something. Well, like he that. was pretty much there for child appeal. Yeah, yeah. basically. At, the, at that time. Um, yeah. yeah, so so in this movie, I was uh, just blown away at how good the characters were. Mm-hmm. They were just so fleshed out. They were well written into the story. Uh, for the most part, they all made sense. There was no annoying or awkward scenes with them and everything like that. They all hit the notes that they were supposed to in the film, and mm-hmm. and I thoroughly enjoyed that. Like even even some of the more minor characters, they were very mm-hmm. interesting. Like yeah. um, I think Maz Maz the, Kanata, the, yeah, Maz Kanata. Yeah, she was a really cool character, and I I felt like she didn't get enough screen time. Almost yeah. like yeah. I I wanted to kind of know a little more about her. Mm-hmm. Um. Just like because how the she hell she to... got that lightsaber? Well, not just uh, I mean, that would be very interesting. But yeah. she, story for another day. She owns that cantina, yeah. and she knows Han Solo, yeah. and she knows Chewie, and yeah. like she's obviously has some stories to tell and everything no like that. Mm-hmm. So I like it's almost that. like they we'll could be... do like they could do like a like a spinoff animated series like Tales from the Crypt, but it'd be like yeah. Tales from Moss. <laughs> yeah. I bet she had a crazy life. I bet she's like the grandmother in uh, Full Metal Alchemist where she had like, this crazy <laughs> life that you just don't know about. Yeah, I exactly. bet you she's 15. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that would make sense. That would make tons of sense. Um, but yeah, that, w- that was definitely one of my favorite parts of it was um, just all the characters were, were very much on point. Um, BB-8 was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was... An excellent, not not so much a replacement for R two D two, but he he'd stand on, he stood on his own yeah. as another entertaining, interesting yeah. uh, droid. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just he was always entertaining to see mm-hmm. on screen too, just because of his mobility and everything mm-hmm. like that. It was and, it was very interesting to see and his personality. I mean, like the prequels somehow managed to make me hate R two D two. It's which because is, they yeah, made him yeah. into like a superhero yeah. or like a, which was ridiculous, like a like spy with gadgets and yeah. stuff like that. This took it back to the original of yeah. kind of like what R2-D2 was, where yeah. he was just this was... sassy little droid mm-hmm. who would kind of interact from time to time. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, the most the most kind of camp or like weird shit that he did with BB-8 was the part where they were kind of, uh, him and Finn were kind of yammering yeah. back and forth and he did the little, the lighter the little thing. Lighter yeah. thumbs yeah. up, which, which I thought was cute hilarious. and it was funny. Yeah. And, it was and it was so quick. And it was so quick and it was just yeah. kind of thrown in there and then just nothing like that ever happened again so it was like it was the right time it was the right moment it mm-hmm. was it was just it was perfect for that scene mm-hmm. and it made sense so i heard that i heard that some people are calling it a middle finger instead <laughs> of a thumbs up no <laughs> oh, of man. course cuz they want to make something of it or oh man they were blown out <laughs> yeah great. they were blown out uh, but, but no no they they did a they did a great job and and yeah all the characters i mean even even the returning characters they did a good job i know yeah. that a lot of people were harping on um uh, oh God! What's her name? Princess Leia. Um, oh, um, like Carrie Fisher. Yeah, a lot of people were harping on Carrie Fisher because Which is they're weird just to like me. they're just like, oh, she's like doesn't suit the role. She's like old and, and <laughs> sad. And, yeah, I know. And it's right? just like it's oh, dumb. Hell? it's so dumb. It's yeah, like it's... Uh, okay, 
let's uh, take a step back from that. Uh, how many years has it been since a exactly. Star Wars yeah. film with her in it? Also, uh, people age. Um, mm-hmm. Also, the fact that what would have happened if they hired someone else to play her role mm-hmm. as old Leia? There would have been a fucking riot. Yeah, people mm-hmm. would have been killing each other over that shit. So, I don't know those people that are like just hammering her down for for mm-hmm. what she did in that movie. Fuck off! Like she did an excellent. Well, role. She's yeah. a fucking general yeah, now. Well, That's the thing. Like, she's a she's, general. She's like, seen some shit. Yeah. All right. Like I think it's okay for her to be she's a little had bit older. A kid. And, <laughs> well, she's had a kid. I think it's okay for her to be old and a little bit weathered. Like if you don't hear the same conversations about Harrison Ford, but you hear her. Like yeah. it's ridiculous. She's like, a, chill out, guys. She's a haggard uh, war veteran, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if you had a kid who ended up being a dark side little fuck, yeah, then yeah. you'd be like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. You'd be pretty stressed out. Yeah, right? remember, remember that time in New Hope that she pretty much shook off her planet getting blown up? Yeah, this is Princess, this is Leia. Like, let's yeah. give her a fucking break, <laughs> yeah. guys. So anyways, yeah, I thought she did it, I thought she did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess as far as the characters go and the, the choice in actors that they chose to portray them, they did, uh, mm-hmm. they did a really good job with that, um... Like, at going into it, new characters are always kind of scary, because it's just like, oh, is this person going to be another um, Hayden Christensen, like, Anakin <laughs> Skywalker failure, or are they going to do all right? And, uh, man, I just cannot remember any of the fucking actors' names. There's, Which one? Uh, Daisy Ridley? That's there's right. Daisy Ridley and John... Boyega. Boyega. I was, I was, gonna, I was yeah. like, Boga, Bogus... No, Boyega. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those two, excellent job. I'm so glad that they got picked, mm-hmm. uh, because they were they were thoroughly entertaining throughout the entire film and yeah. they just really filled those roles very, mm-hmm. very well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that was kind of, that's one of the key factors that I liked about it was the, the characters were really well done and mm-hmm. yeah, and they weren't that awkward or anything like that. So Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, like I, I can't really say too much different from you. I think it was, first of all, it was like a huge relief seeing that it was enjoyable um i had it was almost surreal when the opening crawl starts and it says star wars and you hear that fanfare and the opening and you realize it's not episode one (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) you start with ptsd in the theater yeah right there that's an episode seven four like wait this seems weird that's like what i really like actually this is a small thing but what i really like okay because i was watching I spent my New Year's watching the prequels. Don't know what happened there. I must have blacked out or something. Yeah. Besides the point. Um, <laughs> when you're reading the opening crawls for those movies, like it's just like political discord, this political group is doing this and that, and the politics here and there. I'm just like, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Like, yeah. I'm reading it, and I know what it means, but I don't care, and I barely understand. Yeah, because there's no... That's the worst mm. part, because it's like, if they can throw a bunch of this story that's supposed to matter yeah. and your brain is still saying I don't care yeah. you did it wrong <laughs> and that's the thing that I found really striking about the opening crawl for this one the first thing is like Luke Skywalker has vanished it's getting you in right away that yeah. grabs your brain by the balls and yeah. says look here this is happening yeah. right now <laughs> these are people that you recognize this guy is gone nobody knows where he is exactly yeah. and everything is just like laid out to the point where it's like this is what you need to know before watching this movie. Yeah. Not this is all the other crap that's going on. Yeah. Like I feel like in the first ones they tried to explain everything that was going on yeah. Yeah. in the whole universe at and the same time. And it's like what the fuck? That's that's um that's one thing I'll I'll probably talk about this a little bit more because there's stuff extended universe stuff that I barely understand, but I'm starting to understand more and I'll read more about it. Yeah. But the thing about the original trilogy, granted, this happened like this happened more after the fact. And the thing about that they're doing right about this one too is the. They have a bunch of stuff in here that matters, and then stuff that doesn't either matter that much, or stuff that you're kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure how that happened. And again, there's something to be said about all these things being explained clearly within the movie, mm-hmm. but they leave certain things to extended universe, like stuff about about uh, Finn's past. Yeah, that stuff is all out there in canon, and to the point where they actually explain the traitor guy. That's right, yeah. traitor, T I A I. Yeah, exactly. That guy has an actual number and an actual story. He's zero zero zero. No, I don't think he's zero zero. I don't think he's zero. He's zero? I think he might be right. nines. Okay. But anyway, but again, besides the point. Like, but that stuff is there. And it's cool for people who want to search it out. It's not that pertinent to the story. That was the same thing with the original yeah. trilogy. Stuff like Boba Fett's whole past. Like people, mm-hmm. again, he fall, if you look at the movies, he's a sucker who falls in the uh, the Sarlacc pit right away. Yeah. But if you read the extended universe, you know how he got there and how he got out. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's it, a sucker. <laughs> he's a sucker. And that, uh, yeah. So I like that they're focusing very much on the story and the characters that they're telling right here. 
right? Yeah. And I, I like that um, because the the problem that a lot of people had that when Disney bought Star Wars and everything like that or Lucasfilm or whatever um, is that they were just like, oh, well, other than the movies and these a couple other things, everything else isn't canon. Yeah. And a hard. lot of people were like, no, it's heresy. You can't do that. All this <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh-huh. It's not that that stuff doesn't count. Mm-hmm. It's just it's Disney's choice if they want to make it canon again or not. Because mm-hmm. all that stuff, yeah. it could come... You know, 50 of those fucking Star Wars books, they could come right back in yeah. as canon if Disney, you know, made movies or mm-hmm. said that this is what's happening. Maybe even Rebels or something like that. Like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Because, prime example, Starkiller Base in the movie was from a book. Mm-hmm. That was actually a thing before the movie. where They weren't just, mm-hmm. they didn't just go to the movie and says, oh, we just need another fucking Death Star, so make it do this. That's actually from a book. That was prior to all that stuff. So I thought that was really cool that they actually got to use that mm-hmm. um, in the movie and actually got to see it in action. Yeah. yeah, I think they just sort of did that so they could be like, instead of actually using the character that was made for uh, Leia and... Yeah, Jason and Jaina. Yeah, mm-hmm. instead of Solo using twins. those two, yeah. they could use a new character that yeah. they built from like the bottom. Yeah. Absolutely. So. so yeah, no, I think it was a wise choice for them to do that. Because they don't want to be completely beholden. Because that extended universe is complicated and huge. And it's mm-hmm. awesome. There's a ton of cool stuff in there. But I understand why they wanted to kind of shave things down a little bit. So, um, but yeah, I really liked, uh, I really liked, again, the characters. I thought John Boyega was like the Star Wars character that I've always wanted. I mean, I, John Boyega was probably one of the first, char- like one of the first characters I felt I could like actually relate to in years. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. And again, I'm, I'm a black person and... Like, you know, Lando's awesome. but I smell like, cosplay. Yeah, oh, oh, you know it. I really want to cosplay as John Boyega's fan. I love that character so much. It's just but, as John Boyega, not... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Actually, have you seen that guy? This guy is stylish as fuck. Let me tell you. He, he is, he is. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on that for sure. But that guy is stylish as fuck. Yeah. Those jacket that guy has, oh, amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, but, like, I, what I really like about, uh, about him, and maybe, uh, like... Maybe we'll go into this a little bit later, but I feel like that him, that actor and that character was able to connect with almost everybody. Like, he was instant connections with people. Mm -hmm. Like, he has such a small, such short scenes with, like, with uh, Oscar Isaac's Poe Dameron. And again, talking about minor characters, that's a minor character that had a ton of impact. You know what? Honestly, that was was one of the ones that really spoke to me, and I hope that we get to see more of him. Poe was actually one of my favorite characters in the movie, so... Oh, he's incredible. Isn't he just... He's just so energetic and magnetic, and... What I like is because they show Poe and they show him really being funny and charming right away, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he works with Finn, you automatically, like, okay, I got to trust, like, if this cool guy trusts this guy, I can, like, I can trust him too. We already saw Finn kind of not shooting all those ledgers. So it's like it, you instantly have a reason to connect to these characters yeah. and trust that they trust each other. All right, so mm-hmm. let's do that. We'll talk about our favorite parts of both. Uh, like kind mm-hmm. of our favorite core part of the movie, and yeah. then maybe we can go back and we can talk about each character. Oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah, I'm yeah. going down the rabbit hole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one thing that I really liked, and this is, I think this is one of my favorite aspects of it. Um, I'm not going to go too far down this ra- this rabbit hole, but yeah. actually the lightsaber fight at the end, like mm-hmm. both the lightsaber fights, because at first it was uh, Kylo Ren versus Finn, and. Again, people uh, again. Finn's a uh, very well trained, one of the actual top stormtroopers in his class. So it made sense that he was a good at hand to hand combat. Granted, again, uh, he ended up losing, understandably, mm-hmm. um, but it looked really good. And then after that, with uh, Ray versus Kylo Ren, and what I really liked about that is because again, the old movies kind of stage fighty with their sort of lightsaber fights. Granted, the first movie has horrible lightsaber <laughs> fights, but uh, five mm-hmm. and six actually six five in particular favorite lightsaber fight in the whole series still to this day. Um, it's a little bit stage fighty. In the prequels, it was like crazy martial arts, and then all of a sudden, the bunch of flirts that didn't matter. Everybody mm-hmm. watch episode three at, when <laughs> when Obi Wan and Anakin are sprinting the lightsabers. I watched that part three times. I don't understand what yeah. they're doing. It yeah, looks cool. There's no they, tactical reason that they it's, advance on each other, yeah. then stand about two feet yeah. apart, <laughs> and then literally spin their lightsaber up five times. I think times the idea was to make it other. akin to Chinese martial arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah compared I compared to I, MMA now, where yeah. it's like now they do fucking whatever. It takes mm. where's that where's Chinese martial arts yeah. is all just showy right well no that, that sh- series is very showy but at least in the first two movies most of the flourish they were doing or the things they were doing like you can at least notice the parts where they're trying to fake each other out and trying to actually mm-hmm. kill each other they at point they were standing in front of each other spinning their lightsabers for and maybe no, they'll try no. to fake each other I don't think you get what I was no. trying to say about Chinese martial arts no I mean I, like 
it's akin to real life where it's like uh the dynasty of jedi has for- made them start doing this no I... doing these showy things that they don't need to do <laughs> as they as the generations have gone, they're like losing that. I, I would like to okay. believe that. But that's it's honestly not, just that's bad not, movie making. No, that's, okay, well, that's okay. not the case in this. I'm sorry, it, it isn't. Okay, um, it is literally just bad, bad movie. Yeah, it, and and don't get me wrong, it looked cool, uh, but it just didn't serve any purpose, and it was super weird. And but, J, and JJ Abrams has gone on yeah. record to say that he pulled these lightsaber fights back because yeah. he wanted them to be mm-hmm. not only more basic, like the original movies. But it made sense in the context of oh, what was happening. So yeah. carry on with that because I yeah. think that's where you were going. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. uh, again, Kylo Ren, while he's the most trained out of all of them, his training isn't finished. He's not even a full-fledged he's not Sith, a Sith, let alone a Jedi, yeah. right? Um, Finn, obviously, is you know well-trained at hand-to-hand combat, melee combat, but he is definitely not a Sith or a Jedi. And Rey, granted, again, she was able to win, but she also... she. Good at kicking ass, as we saw very early on. She can she, fight. She like, is versed in hand hand weapon. Like yeah. she has a staff. She's yeah. obviously she can take care of herself because she yeah. beat the crap out of a lot of guys and everything too. So yeah, exactly. she obviously knows how to at least handle mm-hmm. um like melee weapons and everything. So yeah, so they're they're still like they're not quite. None of them are quite there yet. None mm-hmm. of them are are super skilled martial arts. Maybe by the third movie in the series, maybe they will be closer to the prequels. Who knows? That would be cool because. They'd be a little bit more trained. As long as we don't see already. <laughs> yeah. But a little flourish but, is fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for a good, solid lightsaber fight. But yeah, mm-hmm. don't don't overdo it. That, it's <laughs> just that one scene in particular. Like, honestly, yeah. I think that's the most egregious example. The other, like, there is some flourish that makes a little sense. But that scene in particular in number yes. three was a yeah. little excessive. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just really like that. And again, I love the fact that lightsaber fights uh, in the original trilogy... Always, there's one in each movie in the original trilogy, and always culminated to near the end of the movie when the tensions were high, when the actual stakes were really high, when the emotional impact of the scene was important. And that's mm-hmm. what they did here, too. So they didn't feel extraneous. And again, it's a payoff. You're just like, this is what I've been waiting for. And by that time, you're on the edge of your seat. So I mm-hmm. lo- that was probably one of my favorite aspects of it. Cool. Gary. Uh, I just really liked that. Like, I, I went in there without having watched like rewatched four or five and six like oh, okay. most people did mm. i just went in there but the thing is i really like that it just felt like star wars as soon as he went in that's like, exactly what and, i said after two it was just like this yeah, felt like yeah. a star wars movie and like mm-hmm. you see some of the scenes and you just have a grin from ear to ear because you were like you remember that yeah. even though you don't remember that exactly you're yeah. like oh yeah this is good yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> like because of that that's what I really like the most about it, but also it's been getting a lot of flack because people are like, oh, it's just a remake of 4, essentially, because of how the story progresses and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. yeah. But in the same way, it's, like, not the same at all. And, mm-hmm. like, really, the, they only, did, like, they they played it safe, but mm-hmm. at the same time, they added in all the important information that yeah. you need. Like, everything you need to keep you in this for the long haul yeah they took they took key components mm-hmm. of a new hope mm-hmm. and made the story out of that but then mm-hmm. with new situations yeah. new stakes new characters yeah. that's why i have no problem that it does yeah. share a lot of stuff with new hope and i mean if i was any kind of hollywood writer or director i'd be pulling my hair out because it's just like what the fuck do you people want yeah. Yeah. because people <laughs> yeah. people yeah, want reboots one. but yeah. then when it's not the exact same thing as what they originally saw mm-hmm. then they get angry yeah and then when they reboot it and then they make something completely no they said it's not exactly what yeah. i wanted it to or be another, i wouldn't have done it and this then way the other way they're like it's too similar like yeah. why is well, it the same thing well, it's like yeah so now it's just like like what the fuck do you want i think that this was the perfect yeah match it was a good of, balance yeah. of yeah. yeah of old versus new in the same thing mm-hmm. well, it, it's almost like mm-hmm. it was not a soft reboot but it was like it, it definitely took new hope and then kind of like made another story with it yeah. and i think they did an excellent job mm-hmm. with it well the thing with with star the star wars universe and again i will i will always like i will honestly say i i feel like they played it a little bit too close for my like too safe for my liking mm-hmm. however i know why they do it did it and it makes sense like yeah. I, my own sensibilities i was like i want them to do something completely nuts and weird but at the same time it makes sense that they did it and i would not like i'm not sitting here saying i wish they changed it i'm glad what they they did what they did um, but the thing with the Star Wars universe, and specifically when it comes to the Force, yeah, again, it's a mysterious thing that happens and influences things. 
but the Star Wars universe is all about cycles and all about things mm -hmm. repeating themselves yeah. and familiar yeah. situations appearing again and again. And people are like, Star Wars is so coincidentally. Well, so is every movie ever. Yeah. But also, <laughs> The Force. I'm sorry. I know it's like, oh, well, a wizard did it. It's fucking space fantasy. Yeah. So yes, a wizard did do it. A space wizard did it. It's space They're magic. Exactly. Deal with it. <laughs> like the Jedi are well, these weird space shaman that walk around going, The Force will save you and stuff like that. And it makes sense and again like this is the force the force is awakening yet again so similar cycle is happening and it's yeah. like the universe needs balance so we're gonna so if things are being influenced characters will appear here and there and again just like you guys said it is familiar but they're taking things in the new the direction exactly it's familiar but it's not the same they're taking and, things in directions. and in the real world aspect of it in hollywood and all that shit mm. um yes they played it safe which mm. made sense for this movie Absolutely. i have a feeling mm. that eight and nine mm -hmm are going to be completely different. You mm -hmm. couldn't even try to compare them to Empire yeah. and Jedi then. Mm -hmm. Because they've they've set the they've set that first one, they've set that tone, they set those characters mm -hmm. and everyone loves them now or for the most part everyone loves them mm -hmm. and they know where they're kind of going. Mm -hmm. Now they can have fun. Now they can do what they want to do. They don't have to play it safe. They don't have to try to copy, a, you know, scenes from another movie yeah. or anything yeah. like that. And I really think they're going to mix things up and 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 have a lot of fun with with mm -hmm. the next two. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty much what i just like the most about it, it yeah. was just like so yeah. it was very star wars everything fit in the place pretty so well. nadu had new nadu had his his lightsaber battle at the end that he really liked what what felt star wars to you like what was your favorite scene kind of uh probably like the whole getting into the millennium falcon the first time and yeah, like, yes. like going for it yeah <laughs> like that was, that was garbage yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that one's garbage it's like <laughs> it's so good yeah well, it gets blown to pieces <laughs> like let's go to the garbage yeah. <laughs> my older brother um because like he was on the edge of a seat during that first like when they first got on the falcon or flying yeah. around yeah and the tie fighters were chasing them like what he and i really talked about is because we always make granted futurama actually made fun of this when they're yeah. on the near death star right and they're being chased by a bunch of robots and one of them crashes something he's like yeah. i'm so bad at this that's like every <laughs> fucking pilot ever yeah. in fiction but what i liked is that these tie fighter pilots that were chasing them were good pilots. Yeah, they were good. Oh, <laughs> and they had to use like a strategy to bring them down. Like yeah. they couldn't just like outrun them. Or that's like... the thing is that this uh, this is like kind of the whole interesting aspect of this kind of like new order type mm -hmm. thing is mm -hmm. these are actual people now. They're not clones. They're not yeah, stupid yeah. copies and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And they're not the ridiculous yeah. bad shooting stormtroopers mm -hmm. of yeah, yesteryear yeah. either. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. actually made stormtroopers what they mm -hmm. were supposed to be because in the comics and the books and stuff like that. Stormtroopers are actually a force to be reckoned with, yeah. especially in high numbers. Oh, I still, uh, so I still just, saw a few shitty shots in that well, movie. But. Obviously, yeah, but movies. when you, if you took that one movie and compared it to like yeah, yeah. all the other six yeah. movies, yeah. I guarantee that there were more stormtrooper kills or at least hits yeah, yeah. in that one movie than there yeah. were in all six of the other ones. Especially yeah. at the beginning, I think that was why the beginning was shown in that way to yeah. show that the stormtroopers. They wanted were to more show them that they were actually, and, like the first order is actually an issue here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's it's interesting. Uh, I'm again. Uh, I could go down the rabbit hole because I actually find the whole stormtrooper clone trooper stuff really really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to here. I promise. <laughs> but it, it's interesting because the clone troopers are actually really really advanced soldiers. They're really good. Um, during, at, when it got to the New Hope, um, at that point there were still some clones interspersed. There were actually one legion specifically that was all still clones, mm -hmm. but for the most part they were just like most of them were regular humans. Um, and at that point too, they were also just, they were like the Russian army where they were just employing so many and training so many that they were actually really shitty at that point. Yeah. Like there was basically somebody falls down, pick up his gun and an arm and keep walking and shooting <laughs> at that point. So, but this first order, they're doing something new. Um, they are take inundating, taking people from birth and training them up and inundating them to be soldiers. And what was cool, and again, this is more just to get people to shut up about it. They yeah. like, oh, maybe you should just have a clone army. It's like, yeah. no, fuck that. Yeah. I trained my men. And stuff like that, right? <laughs> so they specifically point out that he's like, no, we're not using clones. Any like, I mean, they still have the technology. And they could, and who knows, maybe some clone troopers are still like that. But mm -hmm. they point out very specifically, like, no, these aren't clones, and they're choosing not to. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a smart move. And I, and I like that. It's those quick little references mm -hmm. that lets it very much it puts it in that universe. Like, you know it's Star Wars, you know it references those things. Like it, There were so many little references throughout that. Yeah, and, that's, and that, I really liked it, because, I mean, some of them would fly over your head unless you were either you really know some history mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you were, like, just were really paying attention. It's yeah. just like, oh, what do you mean by that or whatever? But, yeah, yeah I, I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. That's okay. You gotta think? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, um, what I, what I thought was really awesome, like, uh, it actually made me think of one of my other favorite scenes from it was, uh, you know when uh, it does that flashback when Luke is in the desert and R2-D2's there and he like, yeah. reaches his hand up and it's like all storming and shit like that? Yeah. And I guess it's like the first time like Kylo Ren like strikes out, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. The second time, like, because the first time I saw the film, I'm like, okay, that's cool. It has that like, little kind of reference thing or whatever. But the second time, because I, I was trying to watch for more stuff the mm -hmm. second time I saw mm -hmm. the movie. And when it was, uh, when that part came up, uh, I actually when they show Kylo Ren and they show like five or six hooded figures like behind the Knights him, of Ren. Just yeah, the Knights yeah. of Ren when yeah. they were referencing that earlier. Yeah. And like, I was just like, that's really fucking awesome. I hope that we get to see mm -hmm. some of that, like in the next movie, or at least, you know, like maybe a, a part of a flashback or something mm -hmm. like that. Cause I guarantee he's just like walking yeah. around with his fucking entourage, just oh, like wrecking man. up the place with all like these guys with like cool helmets on. And that's shit. exactly like, the uh, thing. The thing <laughs> is, it's like, three seconds and that's enough to raise like six questions yeah exactly it's like yeah. did yeah. the knights of red corrupt him or did he start them up after or mm -hmm. what happened there that's yeah. like tons of shit tons of shit in that movie like that it's just like three or four seconds and it's enough to raise tons of questions for the next few episodes yeah exactly. oh, absolutely and it, it's also enough to get you interested and when they again it's good stuff for books and people and extended universe stuff we may get a book about the Knights of Ren, and if they don't mm -hmm. show up in these movies, we may find out what they're doing in some of these books, or if they find out, like, oh man, the, the Star Killer base was destroyed, I better go to this place and take care of something, right? Yeah, like that's what that's good for, and I love that. I'm looking forward to being uh, immersed in that, you know, that Star Wars mm -hmm. universe yet again. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Those, those next few episodes are going to be way better because just because they don't have to introduce everything again like, yeah exactly it's all done they did that exactly and, they, and they've learned their lesson that politics are boring as fuck <laughs> keep them out of the they're just like hey movie. republic <laughs> hey republic GMO! we're killing you so that you don't you don't insert your politics into the movie <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> was jar jar on one of those planets no he it's just... a drop <laughs> <laughs> nah akbar's fine i'm, I'm worried about yeah, jar jar he's, he's, he's actually uh, watch he'll be in a jar jar's probably like some sort of grizzled mercenary now. Are you kidding me? No, he's the Sith Lord. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's a theory people like, but it's, it's I find it incredibly amusing. Uh, did, did we want to kind of go into the characters? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, we'll we'll fire off on some characters now. Um, all right. Well, let's start with you know one of the big stars of the film. Uh, Traitor? No. <laughs> no, no. That's next week's special. <laughs> okay. all he gets Traitor. a whole episode. <laughs> all about Traitor. No, no, uh, granted, yeah, yeah, sure, let's talk about him first, now that we're joking about him. Um, first off, awesome scene in the movie. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Because it really kind of came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, what stormtrooper has ever had the balls to say... Be like, I have a nightstick, the... traitor, I'll kill you! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, who? what stormtrooper yeah. steps out of line and says, fuck that guy with the lightsaber? Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. So, it was really cool to see that, although a lot of people seem to kind of take issue with it at first, saying mm -hmm. like, oh, that's stupid, it just has like this nightstick and it magically like rebounds uh, lightsaber attacks. It's uh, like, okay, Star first Wars off, knowledge. That, mm -hmm. first off, yes, it's Star Wars, so, you know, give it a rest already, but Space they, have, they already okay. had, they've already yeah. had technology in past mm -hmm. films, books, comics, everything mm -hmm. that can repel lightsaber attacks. Yeah, viral blades. And yeah. not only yeah. that, but this is episode seven. Yeah. This is in the future of yeah, that situation. Yeah, it's like 50 years later. Yeah, so Come they, on. They, they if anything, know about lightsabers. If anything, the guys that were being killed by lightsabers are going to make a defense, or more defense, against something, uh, against being killed by lightsabers. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like that would just seem like common sense. If anything, all the fucking First Order Stormtroopers should be carrying those, or mm. some form of them, or something like that. Yep. So yeah, it makes it makes well, perfect sense that, that he had that. Um... Plus, it was just a really cool scene. It, it was a great scene, and, and the main purpose of it, of it was to show us that Finn had some knew how to use a melee weapon, yeah. right? Like, that's why that scene was there, first of all. Um, again, I read this article, but I'm not, I'm just gonna say, I just brought it up specifically so I can say the Stormtrooper's yeah. number, right? Um, this Stormtrooper's number is FN2199 and nines, right? Yeah. So, this the character... Oh, did they confirm that now? Yeah, yeah, because oh, cool. this character was talked about in one of the novels that was released yeah. and oh sorry 
Oh, I, I thought it was still speculation because oh, they like okay. knew they knew the they were Finn's friends. Yes, in in there, yeah. And one of them, and there were three friends, and one of them died. Yeah, and he was the one at the very beginning, and yeah. that's been confirmed. Yes, but it's not confirmed who. I didn't think it was confirmed who that he actually is yet. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I believe they confirmed because there's still the two friends, right? So is yeah. it so is it like nine seven nine eight and nine nine were those like the the three friends or uh, there was nine nine zero zero and. Uh, I can't remember the other guy, but his seven nine. I think his oh, nickname okay. was Slips because he always slipped Slips because he was yeah. a moron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cause he screwed up all the time. Um, but this, like again, this is one of the characters that yeah. he trained with and that he grew up with. So, and they were in squads of four. They and it, interestingly enough, one of the reasons that Finn connected with Poe so quickly is because Poe gave him a nickname, and he never had a nickname until that moment. So, it was, oh, oh my yeah. god, somebody actually gave me a nickname. <laughs> but this character. They trained together. They grew up together. They know each other. So it was personal for him, which is why he didn't get up close, like, run, like have keep his shield and gun. He's like, no, I'm gonna fuck you up right up close because yeah. this is like you betrayed us. Like we, mm-hmm. you turned your back on us. Like you were one of us. So do you think because they've already basically confirmed that he's gonna get another bigger part in the next movie? Are they are they gonna change his number to TR eight R now? Or are uh, they gonna... No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> That's what everyone references. Though, think, yeah, so. yeah, they all call that for now. Yeah, but. that was pretty good. But uh, but yeah, no, I thought that was a really cool moment. And again, just like you guys mm-hmm. are saying, like it just they've. They know about Jedi. They know about lightsabers. So yes, it makes sense for them to have a weapon that can propel, repel a lightsaber. And just like we were saying, there have been weapons in the past that could repel lightsabers. It's not like this is new technology. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, he was part of the elite chorus soldiers too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So he would probably be the one to have like a higher standard of weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. In any case. Yeah. Plus. But uh, sorry. You can go. Oh, no, I was just going to say, we also saw uh, during that big lineup when the Nazi, I mean, uh, Hux was making a speech <laughs> that, that the Stormtroopers had different armaments, too. Yeah, so yeah. people were saying, like, why did you have that thing? Like, well, they all, like, a lot of them have different armaments. We've seen it's it. probably so. whatever you're fucking good with. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they have, they have fucking pyro troopers in there, too. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they have all kinds of different stuff, so. Yeah. So another part of that scene that I actually really liked was just the fact that uh, in se- you know how they show um, Finn as human pretty pretty early on, yeah. And like the rest of the stormtroopers are just like whatever helmets. But it's <laughs> nice to see like an enemy being human at the same time. It's mm-hmm. like that's his emotion of this is a traitor. I'm yeah. gonna fuck yeah. him up. And see that is something that a New Hope never had. Yeah, they once. never humanized the uh, imperial yeah, because... side. At that time, it was more just good versus bad. Yeah, like, exactly. It was it was standard like one on one. There's Hollywood so writing. much more gray area in this one. I yeah, feel like exactly, and it, it's leading to something interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got to talk about him. Yeah. Uh, all right, now let's talk about one of the core characters of it. Let's talk about Ray. So first yeah. off, mm-hmm. obviously, good to see a not only a female like a, a good female lead role mm-hmm. but a female jedi mm-hmm. yeah. that isn't in a cartoon <laughs> yeah absolutely um plus i like i just really liked her character she wasn't um you know she wasn't uh, noble she wasn't uh like at the jedi academy training or something mm-hmm. like that like she was a down in the desert scrapper yeah. lived by herself mm-hmm. you know like Waiting. fighting for her meals like yeah yeah, yeah. And like, it was just it was just really interesting to, to see that character and um mm-hmm. she had a really cool hover bike. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. Uh lived in a fucking at at. Like how cool is that? Like yeah. she you know yeah. it it was just they, they did a really good job with her character and uh I'm kind of excited to see when she gets trained mm-hmm. uh as a Jedi. I wanna see a staff lightsaber. Oh my god. <laughs> if I I'm pray. really excited that yeah. I, I really hope that's the way they go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, like kind of Luke gets his back, trains her, and she prefers her staff, and then mm-hmm. kind of goes with that. But yeah, she did. She did do a really good, uh, really good job. I think they uh, they do have this, to build their own lightsaber, don't they? Yeah, that's they do. Yeah, so, and if you actually look closely at her staff, there is a what appears to be a lightsaber hilt in yeah. her staff. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that's where they're going with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as far as this being her, uh, like one of her first kind of major roles like this, um, yeah. in, in, not just in a movie, but in Star Wars and everything like that. Uh, I think she's uh, not bland, but I think she's a little, a bit of a blank slate right now mm-hmm. because they just kind of put her out there. She was, you know, uh, it's not like she was like really charming or anything like that. She just kind of 
Uh, she was there. She did what she had to. She started to build a bit of a character to show that she was, you know, she kind of turned her back for a bit and came back. And then she showed that, you know, she can fight some and everything like that. And I think she's going to become very, very interesting in the movies to follow because mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like she was trying to find her place in this one because mm -hmm. she was dislodged from her life so violently yeah. because, you know, one day she's scrapping and getting her meals and living in the desert and then the next day, she's flying through space with a fucking, you know, bounty hunter and, like, all <laughs> yeah. this shit's going on. And, like, it, you know, and then she gets handed, like, a gun and she's fighting and she sees the lightsaber mm -hmm. and, you know, all this crazy shit that she had, like, basically didn't even know existed for the most part. So, um, I think she was almost kind of, like, lost at that point. Oh, for sure. Um, the, I think the only part that kind of bugged me was right at the end, it was almost like they, they gave her too much she was op at the end uh like i get where they were yeah, she got a pretty good it, grasp of but the literally already. it's like you count like count it off on your fingers here okay so we have a strong female lead role uh she gets the millennium falcon she gets chewy she gets a gun she gets a lightsaber she's a jedi she yeah. can use the force she's, she's got like, everything going she on. has she is the superman of like the star wars universe right now mm -hmm. and it's like i hope they kind of pull that back and give everyone kind of their dedicated roles because i don't want her to be that catch-all swiss army knife of like the jedi universe i want mm -hmm. you know because that's one of the things i really liked about the original series was that you had your fast talking uh you know smuggler mm -hmm. and you had your your kind of like jedi in training and mm -hmm. you had you know your sassy princess like there was people to fill those roles and i don't want them to stick ray with five different roles because that's not what she should be doing i, I feel like they only did that because uh i i'm kind of drawing from like out of nowhere for this but like yeah i feel like she was pretty much like a loner the entire time she was mm -hmm. on that planet and yeah like, absolutely. as she was going like she sort of caught up with people but she's used to doing things herself so she just like does everything herself yeah mm -hmm. so like even at the beginning she's just like don't hold my hand and that's not not that it's a guy that's holding her hand but yeah, it's, it's like, like it's just like i don't like people around me and yeah. i don't like people touching me and yeah no it's, it's her way of saying <laughs> yeah. i don't need assistance yeah like, and I will do she's just like used to doing everything herself and that's mm -hmm. just to show her competencies that yeah being able to pretty much do whatever she wants but it'll probably have to fall to someone else at a certain time. Mm -hmm. well, I think so. I mean, they even showed that she was vulnerable even in yeah. that movie because she did... Nearing the end, it was kind well, of... Well, not just that. Yeah. It's like when they were at kind of the Moz section and she was... She ran away. She, uh, yeah, yeah, she yeah. basically ran away That's because true. she saw that vision because of Luke's lightsaber mm -hmm. and everything. And that showed that kind of that, that kind of chink in the armor there where it was they... She pulled back from that. Something actually scared her for once rather mm -hmm. than saying oh, I can deal with this, no problem, I can do it myself. She fucking ran for it because she mm -hmm. didn't like what she saw and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I think that showed that kind of character flaw, and I think that will come up again, and that will allow other people to help her or sister or, or do whatever yeah. at, the, at that yeah. point. So And uh, it was also, I was saying near the end because of like the connection that she made with Finn and yes. by the end there, yeah, that too. where she was like starting to rely on him and stuff too. Like, so. Yeah, like that one moment where it's just like he, to, uh, it's like it was his idea to save you and she to, and she's just like, thank you. Like even when, I actually appreciate that they didn't have the falling out moment well, when Finn admitted, hey, I'm actually, I've been a stormtrooper. Yeah, because like, they, they could have gone yeah, down a whole other have, drama yeah, path. They could have done something. Yeah. Disney movies tend to do that quite a bit. <laughs> All movies do, to be fair. But you see, I you notice this often in Disney uh, animated cartoons back in the past when you lied to me scene. And, but, then, and then they spent 45 minutes yeah. reconnecting yeah. again after yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Like, we didn't need that. But even then, like, she was upset. You can tell, again impressive because you could tell by the look on her face she was mad and disappointed this is the, acting through just expression but then she took a moment and said don't go because she's like what's most important to me right now is this person not leaving um and then at the end when she was so relieved when he came back mm -hmm. like it's just like there are people that i can depend on it's it's, it's mm -hmm. different but it's actually just okay to do this yeah, yeah. um i too feel that, that like i i kind of I, I think Again, like, the reason she was, like, so, like, was able to do so much in this movie um, was mostly for our benefit. It's like, this character is very self-sufficient. She's very strong. She knows what she's doing. And she can figure out what to do in certain situations. And as an introductory moment for this character, I feel like it made sense to put that much 
uh, weight on her actions and what she did and her abilities. Yeah. Um, again, I agree with you guys. I feel like in the subsequent movies, we'll see a little bit, uh, you know, her more relegated to a role where she needs assistance from people or where other people are doing things while her well, one job is this one thing. And I mean, talking about like kind of the whole thing cycling again, mm -hmm. if we've learned anything from uh, four, five, and six, mm -hmm. is that basically this one is to kind of set everything in its place, show what's happening. The second film in this series, which will be eight, Mm -hmm. uh is i think ray is going to be in that situation where uh kylo is going to be on the up mm -hmm. and ray is going to be on the way down mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. the you have to break her down to bring her back up kind mm -hmm. of situation so i think kylo is going to be um just a hot box of rage mm -hmm. learning how to be a sith master <laughs> yeah and i think ray is going to get the fucking smackdown and realize that she does need that assistance but she can be so much more than what she is right now yeah. and mm -hmm. And then obviously nine will be the the big battle clash and, mm -hmm. and victory and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, I think that's kind of where it's going. But as it stands right now, they have a good character to work with, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. great because again, the disaster that was Anakin Skywalker, that was just a train wreck through three movies. <laughs> I can't see it, but I'm wincing. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, I hate the sand. It <laughs> gets in your boots and it gets ev shut up. Anyway, um, it gets in his yeah. fucking vagina. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. Like, I think Daisy Ridley did an amazing job. I think this is one of her first major acting roles, and she pretty much knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to, I, take, to take that and seize it as an actress mm -hmm. that has has almost nothing under her belt at that point, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, she did an amazing job with it. Yeah. Uh, what a great casting. And she... And she just really looked the part. Like I believed when she was in, like when she was scavenging around that uh, star destroyer. I mm -hmm. believed when she got into that uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon was able to pilot it, and then also the look on her face when she to when she was like they were she took off the compensator for like the oh yeah right, and she's just like I just took it off, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> freaking Harrison Ford's yeah. like great yeah, like, job I guess yeah. Yeah. whatever like whatever. He, he's Fuck. just like. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's, she the, just, that's the best you can hope for yeah. from Han Solo. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But, um, I thought she was just such a... Again, she was... And I like that... I kind of appreciate the fact that she's a bit of a blank slate right now. Because, again, she spent most of her life alone. Yeah. She didn't really have to interact with people. So she's still kind of figuring that out. But um, I think my favorite, like, just Ray scene, like, just of Ray acting... Uh, uh, Daisy really acting was when her and John Boyega ran up to each other after they survived the uh, Tie Fighter chase, right? Oh, and then yes. they were both talking at the same time and how excited it's they were. Like, I didn't know you could yeah. I, didn't know I thought you could shoot like that. And then they're just like that scene looked like those two people were just having fun together. And then yeah. she's just like takes a moment. She's like, I don't know your name. Yeah. <laughs> and then she, I, I just felt like there was this real humanity that came into her that she'd never felt before because mm -hmm. she's like I'm connecting with this other person we just went through hell together and I'm connecting with another human that I feel like I can actually talk to yeah and she displayed that so well yeah, in that yeah. scene all right well uh I'm gonna let you feel this one because he's your favorite let's talk about Finn uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> so cool. okay he's just like fangirling over here <laughs> yeah oh my god I that's swear. not his favorite by the way <laughs> oh no <laughs> No, Finn, Finn and Poe. Oh, Finn, Finn, no, Finn is my favorite. Is Finn, he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, that's that's what I actually. No, no, yeah, Poe Poe's Poe's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, like I love Poe, but but Finn is just like I mean, swear to like I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm I'm totally Finn and Poe mm. <laughs> till the till the end of time. I love it. But in any case, I'll 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 dial back a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Finn. What a fantastic character. I mean, I only know John Boyega before this from this a movie called Attack the Block, which is great. Watch it. It's just oh, a... that's right. He was in that, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was the main character. Mm -hmm. He's Moses. Mm -hmm. he, and just a fun, just a fun movie. And Edgar mm -hmm. Wright as well. So of course I'm. Just blah, blah, blah. But I really appreciate. It. First of all, again, one of the first characters I was able to relate to for in years. And again, uh, he was black, which is awesome, but also yeah, because... Yeah, because basically, what did, what, did, uh, what did people have before? Mace Windu. Well, Mace Windu on Lando <laughs> Calrissian. Which Lando, 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 was, Lando was cool, for sure. But, I mean, again, he's much more of a side character. And same with Mace Windu, for uh, for all... Like, in, in all honesty. And mm -hmm. don't even get me started on the Jedi Order and Mace Windu's death, because Mace Windu is supposed to be the best lightsaber duelist in the galaxy. Um, that fight with Pal... And again, freaking... <laughs> Okay, Mace but Windu. I know. Right? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! See, the thing too that pissed me off. Like, first of all, I, he had that fight with Palpatine. It was pretty cheesy. It didn't look great. Um, and then also, uh, Samuel Jackson in an interview again didn't really care for Force Unleashed, which is fine. 
But he said those kids need to go to lightsaber school. I'm like, first of all, they haven't had a chance. <laughs> Second, they didn't have a whole goddamn order. Second of all, did you not see your fight with Palpatine? It was ridiculous. Anyway, I, I dialed back. But the <laughs> fact that we have Finn, who is not only black, but he's also a character on the ground level, right? He doesn't have the force. He's not a huge general. He is a stormtrooper. And he is being thrust into... And a big thing with both Finn and Rey is people being thrust into worlds that they're not familiar with and finding themselves in the universe. He was also in this position because he stepped out somewhere and he is completely terrified of what he could face. What I like about Finn and what I feel like some people tend to gloss over is the fact that people often say like, oh, Finn's a little bit wishy-washy, like he doesn't have the force, he's not like that good of a pilot, he worked in sanitation, like what's the point of him even being there? What I think they team to miss is a couple things. One thing I mentioned earlier is the fact that Finn, as again, extended universe stuff, but the thing thing about him is that he was, even though he didn't have a nickname, he was still really loved by his comrades because he was the leader and he brought them all together and he covered for slips. He cares about people. He connects with people really easily. And every single character, like every single friendly that he met, he connected with almost immediately. He connected with Chewie very clo- that's quickly the thing. too. He, that's, his, that's his character strength. Is he's yeah. going to be that guy that always watches out for, mm-hmm. for everyone on his team. Mm-hmm. He may not have like the best shot or you know like be the strongest or the mm-hmm. smartest or whatever, but mm-hmm. he's that like do good on the team like mm-hmm. always there for you kind of thing mm-hmm. and every i think every good like team on on the big screen needs that character mm-hmm. absolutely and that and he did that like really well but i think another thing that people seem to somewhat gloss over is the fact that he is one of the bravest characters in the series in the that movie again he's that's kind of hard to see but the thing is that when characters are terrified and going and running away when they're able to turn around despite that and come back that is that's why he's that brave because again he was ready he was ready to get off on like to leave when they were on Maz Kanata's, uh, Kanata's uh, planet but when he turned around and came back to sit to because he was worried about Ray, like he didn't give it a second thought at all he just came back and wasn't like oh what should I do it wasn't like the emotional struggle he was just like oh shit Turned and ran. <laughs> like, how, how about the fact that he went against his orders to not, or like to kill that vill, like yeah. the villagers and stuff, and he didn't do it. Yeah. When there's people around who could easily, easily. just force choke him. Yes. Because yeah. they can read his thoughts that he didn't do anything. Like I kind of thought he would like take some balls. start yeah. faking shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Pew pew pew. Die, die, scum. Die, scum. Pew pew pew. Yeah. No, exactly. Like he and again, he knew that they'd be able to scan his weapon and see that it wasn't used, and he knew that he would probably be put to yeah, reconditioning. Knew. Like, like exactly. Like he he made a stand. In a place that very few, if any, ever have. And he did it. So I really love that. But even besides that, this character, again, so magnetic, so interesting, so funny. He, he His comedic timing was just absolutely fantastic. And it really made you care about him. He was he was like if Jar Jar Binks was actually a good, interesting, funny character. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'd relate I, I, to Jar Jar. I, I, I don't know, but I mean, but I mean that's the thing yeah, is yeah. that when, when it came to um, kind of the camp or the comedy relief, mm-hmm. Finn was usually yeah, the, yeah. the butt of the joke. Um, when they were carrying BB-8 and they took him into the hatch, he mm. BB-8 fell on him and like, yeah, pushed yeah, him, yeah. basically. Yeah. Or did the, he did the thumbs up thing with him and stuff like that. It's like... Yeah. Not it wasn't just the connection between those two, but whenever there was that kind of comedy break on screen, mm-hmm. Finn was usually involved. Yeah. That's what the direction they tried to go with Jar Jar Binks. He was supposed to be that comic relief, but he was a fucking moron and he was annoying and he was stupid looking. Yeah. Finn is none of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so they, this is this is that character done right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Finn, like Finn, like again, he was useful. Like he was right there fighting, and also even though he didn't know how to disable Star uh, the Star Killer base, he did know. What well, where he gave them? To, he yeah. gave them pertinent information yeah. that allowed them to do that. So. Absolutely. And Apparently, Phasma didn't have very good training either because she just fucking takes <laughs> it off. <laughs> like, takes it offline. Why? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure what happened there. Phasma, that, that was something. I, I don't know really what the hope, fuck happened. To I that. really hope Phasma doesn't become our yeah, Boba Fett. She better be Boba a better Fett. character than that. I hope so. Um, but but yeah, like that was that was ridiculous. Um. But but about Finn and again his connections with Ray 
just immediate like immediate connection i love again that's like you said we kept grabbing her hat she's like let go of my hat <laughs> she keeps doing it this is, well what i like though was the, the was a little bit of a t- uh, switch on the meat cute again i hate tro- these type of romance tropes in movies so when they do anything to make it slightly different i usually appreciate it yeah. so her, him seeing her about to get mugged like oh i better do something well awesome stops she kills the she basically takes out those guys yeah and then the droid looks at points and then she looks at just start charging at him he's like oh shit so he runs <laughs> yeah. away like that was just yeah that awesome. was actually really good that was that was really great <laughs> um and then again his scenes with poe are just amazing i mean i'm not gonna lie i i so may it's the bromance in the new generation oh my god i love it i may <laughs> have squealed like I, I almost squealed the first time <laughs> when they ran up and hugged each other it's like you're alive he's like you did it you finished my mission man yeah that's my jacket oh <laughs> let me give it back to you it's like no it suits you i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was I just I love their back and forth, even though you don't get a whole lot of it, but yeah. just those small scenes. And again, one of my favorite scenes between the two of them, no dialogue whatsoever. It's when they're going to the mission and the camera's kind of panning around and then Poe po pats been on the shoulder as they walk past each other. It's just small things like that, small little character moments like that I really appreciate. Yeah. And they were able to kind of work those in. Um so yeah, um Finn is just a fantastic character. And what I like too is the fact that at the end of his storyline, you kind of know where where Kylo, Ren, and Rey are going, but mm-hmm. we don't know where Finn's going. Which I which is really exciting to me. I again they could screw it up, which I pray to God they yeah. don't. But I really think that a big thing for him is finding his place in the universe and what he's gonna do. And I feel like he's got a tremendous potential. Okay, well, can I put your your mind at ease with with my belief in, in what's going to happen Please, with that? Absolutely. I I think there's a lot of people out there who said, oh, well, if that could have never happened with Finn, like the whole lightsaber thing, because you need to be a force user mm, to, to use a lightsaber. That's not true. I'm like that's that is been... that is not true at all. <laughs> granted, it okay. Granted, it is not true at all. Mm. But I'm really hoping that Finn is force sensitive. Oh, at I least. hope so. He may not be, be cool. a full blooded like Jedi Knight because again, they take these kids. You know, they steal these kids, train them up to be stormtroopers and stuff like that. He could have come from, you know, some kind of bloodline that were Force users. Mm-hmm. Uh, Didn't they say... mess up on the toy line and call him a Calrissian? Mm-hmm. What? Are they really? really? I think they, I think, I think there was like a spoiler on a toy line or something by accident. That's interesting. I haven't but seen But I don't know before. if he is. But... I kind of hope he's not. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of ridiculous. It would be weird, like, but like, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, oh, really, guys? Is there one black family? Yeah, there's one. Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two. There's whoever yeah. makes Windu's oh, family is, and then yeah. and, uh, Calrissians. They're the yeah. only ones. Like, no, yeah. I, I hope not. I, I hope think that's is. probably just an error, though. I, 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 hope, so. I hope it is. Or it's probably some, just someone like, like, oh, it's a black person. It must be a Calrissian. It must be one of these guys. I heard you guys all know each other across the galaxy. No! But anyways, my hope is, because, you know, through Star Wars, there have always been multiple Saber users through the different movies and everything mm-hmm. like that so my hope is that basically it comes down to uh to the both of them actually having lightsabers maybe having a big duel in the end or like that mm-hmm. because how cool would it be to see ray and finn fight in episode nine mm-hmm. against like you know maybe the knights of ren or something yeah. like that like how fucking awesome would that be for it to come through those movie those three movies to down to that scene mm-hmm. so that's what i'm hoping for anyways yeah because i think it's it was almost kind of like a misdirection because you know how he keeps asking for a blaster mm-hmm. in that movie? Yeah. Like multiple you know what, times in the whole one. movie? Yeah. And then they say, you have one. Mm-hmm. And he, again, not actually a force user, not yet anyways, but he uses it twice and he uses it pretty damn well yeah. too. So I'm hoping that that's where they're going mm-hmm. with it because mm-hmm. uh, that'd be really cool because not only to have another awesome saber user that everyone really likes, but to have, again, uh, have another black Jedi too. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of, unfortunately, Mace Windu yeah. and his <laughs> horrible, horrible death to idiot Skywalker. Never <laughs> uh, 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 talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's my my take on that. So, mm-hmm. but of that, yes, awesome character who's very, very enjoyable, very funny. So, yeah, I love him. Cool. Super charisma. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like they might go the direction where like. Um, because he has such a connection with Ray at the moment, because mm-hmm. he's in a coma right now, essentially, yeah. uh, it's gonna get to the point where she comes back, but she's like so far ahead of him, or mm-hmm. like so different—not like mm-hmm. different, but like well, so, she's changed. Yeah, it's yeah, changed so much that he's just like, "What happened?" Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. And then like that ends up being a conflict in him. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
They yeah. could go a million directions with oh, that. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, they sure. could, like, with him where he is and where Ray is and stuff like that, like, it's obvious where Ray's going, but yeah, mm-hmm. like you were saying, like, Finn's character right now is just in the ether. Like, he could go in any direction right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with that. Cool. Um, all right. Off to the dark side? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Kylo Ren. I think Dan's <laughs> eyes just turned yellow. Oh, God. Um, okay, so basically, uh, I think he was everyone's favorite, even before the movie came out, um, just because of his look. Because, oh, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that. I mean, who didn't fucking squee and jump out of their chair when they saw that lightsaber fire up when they very first saw the, the like, the first trailer, like, back mm-hmm. in, what, July or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was just, like, mind blown. Mm-hmm. Um, even for the even for the people that want to complain, it's like, oh, that's stupid, or blah, it'd be more dangerous to use that. So it's, like, it's like, shut the fuck up. All right, it's cool. <laughs> Leave it they, alone. They actually have an... Do, do, did we talk about the actual in-universe reason for the crossguard saber? Oh, you, uh, I know what oh, you it know, is. Okay. I don't think Go we ahead. talked about it, but do you want to explain it for the... Sure, event? yeah. I'll just do it really quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, again... Oftentimes, these characters are very much on the nose with their imagery and the way they are. Kylo Ren, ton of conflict within his within his mind, within his soul, within the pull between light and dark. His lightsaber crystal is cracked. Yeah. So that's why his saber so, looks so goddamn unstable. And because of that, he needs it to vent out of the sides, which is why it has a cross guard. Mm-hmm. Awesome, cool in universe reason for having a cool lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't just like. Oh well, we don't want to make another a double-ended lightsaber, so let's just make one with a cross. Make a triple-ended. It's, like, <laughs> it's like no, they they made they gave it a reason. There's a reason why it looks like that, and it does what it does. And the other part that people was complaining was like, well, if you slid the lightsaber down, it would just cut through it. It's like, what? yeah, it would cut through it, and then what? It would hit the fucking venting and stop anyways. Yeah. It just has the little things to vent them out the sides. Mm-hmm. It's just. Shut up about it. It's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, what it comes down to is that obviously, again, with, you know, mirroring stuff from A New Hope and everything like that, they were trying to make, uh, like, another, I guess, dark side charismatic character like Darth Vader. Like, people just are drawn to Darth Vader because he's just mm-hmm. this amazingly, like, kind of supreme evil overlord kind of character. Mm-hmm. And... A lot of people not even knowing like what Kylo's deal before the whole movie, they were just like, "That guy looks fucking cool. I want the action figure. I want the poster." Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. look at that. Look at that helmet. Yeah, and then you're badass. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Okay, I will admit, I was taken back a bit when he took his helmet off for the first <laughs> when time he because bad. Because basically, <laughs> I didn't know what I was expecting. Sure. I had no idea yeah. who he was, or okay. what he was going to look like, or anything like that. So. <laughs> It was just kind of like, all right, here we go. He took his helmet off. What's he going to look like? And I saw him. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, he looks like. <sighs> <laughs> I, I kind of felt like that too. but he, he, I, Like I said this after the first time I saw it. I'm like, he looks like Darth Snape, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I'll teach you the but you know box. what? Honestly, even when I, when I went back and thought on it, and then I saw the movie for the second time, it doesn't bug me anymore. It yeah. really doesn't. Because first off, yeah, they want to make him look like the son of, a, mm. of Han and everything like that, so that's fine. I mean, I can kind of see it. He's very lanky compared to Han, but other than that, I guess he was kind of... Han was lanky in his younger years, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, the, the main issue that a lot of people took with him is that it's like, oh, he's so stupid and emo and blah, he's like crying and everything. It's like, okay... Think about the character. Yeah. Are you, did you Context. watch the same yeah. movie yeah. that everyone else did? Mm-hmm. It's that conflict that he has. Okay, he yeah. is not Darth Vader. No matter how much you want him to be, he is not Darth Vader. Yeah. Not even close. He's not a full Sith. He doesn't have proper training. Uh, he he actually has conflict, unlike Darth Vader. Darth Vader was pure dark side. Like He is as dark side as it gets. Kylo Ren is like 50-50 yeah. at the start yeah. of the movie. Like He... There's the scene where he's arguing in his own head that he's going to the light. Like, mm-hmm. that, again, that's a scene we've never seen in a movie. There's, mm-hmm. uh, other than obviously Anakin, but we already knew where that was going. Yeah, and that was not even Fuck balanced Anakin. at all. Yeah, so, that was not balanced. That was now, basically, that was just a downward spiral the whole time. This is the first time we've actually seen a conflict between the two of them, yeah. him actually fighting against it. I don't know if Anakin would be considered conflict, other than, like, it was more like just being a little bitchy. <laughs> bitchy, angsty piece of shit. Well, and that's the thing is, like, it, it's he hard never to even, really. 
it's hard to even say like what like why he went to the dark side because it was so stupidly written yeah. that yeah, it didn't even really make that much I need sense. Him. It was just kind of like it was like okay, here's episode one, here's episode four. This kid needs to be this guy by the end of this movie. Write some it. crap in between <laughs> and do it like yeah. that. That was basically it. Yeah. So yeah, to say there was conflict. Yeah, not, not really. really yeah. He was in a constant downward spiral. No matter what was going on, he was always getting more and more evil throughout the movies. I would even argue that he just kind of got kind of evil in the second one for two seconds when he killed a couple Tuscan Raiders <laughs> and then turned super evil in the third one where he's like, no, what have I done, Master? Oh, I must kill these children now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really not well written. Yeah. Oh, again, I, I, it's easy for me to say I could do better. I mean... But, I mean, I don't think I, like, I'm not a writer. However, I've seen similar narratives in other movies and TV shows done with a lot more nuance mm-hmm. than that. Mm-hmm. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, what it comes down to is uh, I really liked him. Because mm-hmm. as far as a bad guy goes, uh, he had that conflict. He has this interesting character build to him. And, again, not quite a blank slate like Ray, but they have work to do with him. And I think that's really interesting. Whereas when you saw Darth Vader for the first time, he was this just dark side Supreme overlord. Yeah, he yeah. was where he was and he was always going to be that. Mm-hmm. He, he was like was, a monolith. He was never really yeah. going to change all that mm-hmm. much. Um, with Kylo Ren, I think it's going to be really interesting because honestly, even though he's going to get his Sith training with, with um, uh, Snoke, no, Snoke. Uh, and all that shit's going to happen. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of interesting that he had that conflict, so maybe by the third movie something happens? I don't know. We'll see. Second movie is just entirely a training montage. <laughs> I'm a tiger. I'm a tiger movie. for two hours. <laughs> I just, want it. Just like, just like hitting a punching just bag Just switching with a back between like Kylo and Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want it. Do it, Hollywood. Make it happen. You heard it here first. 2017. Uh, it's going to be great. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, again, by the second time I watched the movie, I really enjoyed his character. I, I kind of got where they were going with it. It made sense. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And yeah, ultimately, uh, they don't need to change a thing of his look. I mm-hmm. love how he looks. He mm-hmm. looks awesome. Like, uh, maybe he needs to lose the cape when he's fighting or something, because it's like, <laughs> capes are kind of a little dated, but it, it goes very much with the, the Sith look. Like, yeah. he looks like a dark side user. Well, capes are and, cool, man. <laughs> And they, they did a really good job. It's like they, they kind of... It's almost like they were sent out on the task to recreate like a Darth... A, a cool character like Darth Vader, mm-hmm. but make him different in a way. And I think that they, they nailed it. Mm-hmm. So, Well, I, I, I agree with you like on everything you say, for sure. Like, what I, I like... I love Kylo Ren. I think he's a fantastic villain. I love the fact that he's conflicted. What I... The way I look at him is that he is the biggest... Darth Vader fanboy. It's like oh yeah, was, it's like he was like uh, training with Luke, and he's just like, oh, what's this weird manga you have? It's like, oh, those don't look at that. It's like, oh man, this is all about Darth Vader. It's like and Luke's like, I drew those. Just don't. <laughs> you like them? Are they good? He's like, yeah, they're kind of interesting. And then he kept reading it. And then he kept finding out more and more, and did some internet searches, some Wikipedia. He's like, fuck, this Darth Vader guy's awesome. And then he kind of just, hey, what are you doing, Kylo? It's like making a mask. Don't put it on. My <laughs> 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 Kylo Ren now. Like, I, like uh, again, that's like, ridiculous. But I honestly feel like he is just a huge fanboy to the point where it's just like, this is what a true Force user looks like. I mm-hmm. want to be that. But he can't. He just can't. And he finds that infuriating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love that about oh, him. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, that was one of the other things. Yeah, like, he had a lot of Where he had his, had his kind of rage fits and everything like that. Mm. And again, I thought that was interesting. There was people laughing. There were some people saying it was stupid. Oh, I really yeah. enjoyed it because, again, it showed that conflict. It showed that, mm. uh, again, in comparison to Darth Vader, mm. who would he would walk in and there would just be this air about him that yes. everyone would go silent and he would just control the room. Mm-hmm. This guy... Even Hux was stepping on his feet. Yeah. And when this guy, like, lost his shit, it wasn't just like, okay, I can keep my calm, I will stay, you know, cool and collected about this, and this is how I work this out. No, he was just like, fuck this fucking computer! And he slashed <laughs> yeah. him with his lightsaber and yeah. this, it scared the stormtroopers away and shit like that. Yeah. I thought that was cool, because, again, it just showed that mm-hmm. how like, untrained he is right now. Yeah, like, there's a lot of instability in everything Loose cannon! Does, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So. No, I, I totally agree. He was just, like, he didn't know where, again, 
another character who's trying to find his place in the universe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thematic similarities between characters? Oh no, writing! <laughs> anyway, like, yeah, and I love that about him. I love the fact that he got really angry and freaked out. I love the fact that Huck stepped on his toes. You could tell it pissed him off, but he's like, I can't actually do anything about yeah. this, right? <laughs> um, what, I, I, you know what, interestingly, I knew uh, it was Adam Driver, so I know what he looks like, so, but even... Similarly, somehow I, I, there was a bit of a shock when he took off that helmet to me as well. But the I, thing is, he took it off so easily. He was just like, "Yeah, yeah I'm done with yeah. this." Yeah. Like, dr- dr- you want to see my face? Here yeah. you go. Here's my face. This is um, me. Exactly. And I liked the fact that when he took off his helmet, like he looked almost like he was going to cry almost every time he was like when he didn't have his helmet off. And that was because part of the reason he wears his helmet not only to be like Darth Vader, to, but to hide that conflict. Like yeah. when you've got a weird voice modulator and you're creepy looking, you got this mask. People are fucking terrified because they don't yeah. know what's behind it. But when you see that, you're just like, wow, he, he again, he's 30, but he, like, he's a kid. He's a kid and he is kind of scared. Mm-hmm. Um, and what a great contrast that was from the beginning of the movie. Amazing scene where freaking amazing Poe Dameron shoots, <laughs> a, like, blast, uh, like, shoots a blaster at him. And he stops it. This is the first time we've seen that kind of force use in any of the movies. Heck, even in the extended universe, well, maybe not all the extended universe, I can't say that for sure, but talking about the uh, Clone Wars cartoon, the Rebels cartoon, yeah. both of which I watch, um, never seen the Force used like that. Yeah. So it's like, holy shit, this guy's, whether he's conflict or not, whether he's open to being, like, messed with, he's really powerful. That's the thing, is I think it's that, it's that rage that's powering that, because mm-hmm. it's like, when you look at someone... Again, because it's a little dated, you look at something like Darth Vader, he was choking a guy who was like five feet away from him. Uh, Kylo Ren, on the other hand, not only stopped a blaster shot in the air, but he like force pulled a guy from like fucking like 30 feet away. And like, and he didn't even have to keep like force holding anything. He was having a full conversation, not even looking at that blaster shot. That was happening while all that stuff was going on, mm-hmm. and it only left when he like basically told it to leave. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It just shows yes. that um, I think that's why people like Snoke and everything that were kind of putting up with him, mm-hmm. kind of his rage fits and his like untrainedness and everything like that. Like the fact that he is that powerful, mm-hmm. I think they want mm-hmm. to harness that and. I think they they kind of alluded to that in the movie that they were basically he was being kind of almost used. Yeah, they oh, were trying yeah, yeah. to. I can't remember if they actually said that or if they were alluding well, to that, but basically ha, ha, Han said it. Yeah, Han said that yeah. they were using him or whatever because I think he was such a powerful yeah. force user that they were going to basically use him. Uh, yeah, to kind mm-hmm. of take over and everything. So yeah, I, I'm just curious as to see like where that is going to go because he's so powerful, but like how how did he fall to the dark side when like he could have been just as powerful of a, like... Well, and that's... I think that's light either user. going to be that extended stuff or we're going to see that in the next movie with uh-huh. the Knights of Ren, mm-hmm. with Snoke especially, because yeah. who the fuck is Snoke? Like, what yeah, is going just, on uh, there? He's a giant hologram right now. Like, that's all he is. He's, he's gonna, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> he is! Man, by the way, he's going to reveal his mask to be Jar Jar. I'm just kidding. I'll leave it alone. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Don't um, you dare. Uh, but there, it, it's interesting as to where that could go because, mm-hmm. like, his motivations for doing anything that mm-hmm. he has done... Mm-hmm. Like, there, you could tell he's, like, angry and stuff, but, like, just why mm-hmm. is he forcing himself to do all this? Yeah. Like, it's like, did he make that posse of his, his knights? Yeah. Or did they turn him to the dark yeah. side? Yeah. Like, it's, there's a lot of shit going on there that yeah. could be. No, I have, I have some, just very sw- brief thoughts on that, actually, like, how he turned to the dark side. Um, again, let's keep in mind, and again, it's been 30 years since then, like, both out in the real world and in the Star Wars yeah. u- universe. But by the end of the Jedi Re- of Return of the Jedi, Luke wasn't even a Jedi. Like he called himself yes. a Jedi, but yeah. he actually wasn't. He was very much untrained. And the whole all of Empire Strikes Back was basically about him fucking up. Yeah. At one point, he's like, "I can't believe like when Yoda lifts up one of my favorite scenes in that movie. Yoda lifts up the X-wing out of the swamp. He's like, "I can't believe it." Yoda quietly says, "That's why you fail." Yeah. Like he mm-hmm. like his faith is so like muddled, and even again, he's completely impatient. He doesn't listen to Yoda. Uh, even by the end of Return of the Jedi, yes, he does stop himself from absolutely slaying Darth Vader in rage. But look at that whole fight, and near the end, especially, he just completely loses his shit. He's so easily swayed. Mm-hmm. Um, again, he probably had much more time to refine himself. So, but I'm just saying, like, he 
wasn't that good of a Jedi. And even when he started, and he probably trained himself quite a bit more, but at the end, was he even that qualified to be a teacher? Oh, yeah, he had, like, an academy. So maybe, like, maybe, like, Kylo was stronger than it or, like, felt he was better than it. Potentially. Maybe ultimately your suggestion is is that that Luke didn't train him properly because he never received proper training himself. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That's kind of the way I think about that. that. Yeah, because I would imagine with something, again, like this is kind of going into the ethos of (laughs) the Force and everything like that, but I would imagine if you have the Force and you're not properly trained how to use it, uh, yeah, it could probably fuck some shit up. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. your mind and your body and everything like that. So yeah, if you have some guy who comes up to you and says, hey, I'll teach you how to use that, but I don't even know how to use it, but let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. It might have driven him to the dark side in some way. The funny thing is, if that's the case and... What ended up happening was he ended up having a uh, superiority complex over his teacher mm-hmm. and things like that. He tried to do the same shit to Rick. Yes. Yeah. He was like, I will teach you, and, even though I have no fucking yeah. clue what I'm doing either, right? <laughs> teacher, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Interesting. Like, that's that's cool actually one. really fascinating if, the, if that were the case of mm-hmm. what happened to, mm-hmm. for him to get there. That's really interesting. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I definitely want to say about Kylo Ren, again, going to the lightsaber fight, which I just love. Yes, because I had to talk about that too, but oh. you're probably going to go for yeah. it. Sure, okay, well, yes, please, please expand upon what I say. <laughs> um, but yeah, so again, people talk about, oh, he was so weak, how can he get beaten by a yeah. ray, and <laughs> how could Finn even stand a chance of this now? Hey, um, guys, remember that? Again, what mo- were we watching the same movie? Because I recall, not so long <laughs> he ago, got after, he got fucking shot yeah, by a goddamn... Bowcaster, which yeah, is already which is just like purpose. destroying like, everything. Well, yeah, exactly. They showed how powerful they, it was they, twice in purpose, the movie. On purpose. They showed us that specifically so when we see Kylo Ren get hit by it and him barely budge, just fall to the down a bit. Like, yeah. Holy he, shit, he's he, not dead. Kylo Ren <laughs> drops to a knee <laughs> when he gets hit with a bowcaster. <laughs> A fucking star- charging stormtrooper gets shot with it. He flies 20 feet into the air and, get- and gets killed. Yeah. Like, yeah. That so, shows a bit of a difference in and, your abilities yeah. there. And even if you... Again, like sometimes movie viewers don't notice something or forget something. Happens. I'm not even judging people for that. But what they specifically show, they show a zoom up on the ground where it's covered blood. They keep showing us him beating his side because he is in so much pain. Yeah. And he's just like, fuck, use the pain, use the pain, use the pain. Yeah, like, exactly. He is... He's fueling his rage by punching his own wound. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was like, awesome. Again, yeah, he did that so many times. Right? I love that. Again, this character is so insane, he's freaking the fuck out. Yeah. So, yes, he is hurt really badly and again it's funny because my older brother and i would talk about this we were talking about the fight how much we liked it the fact that the idea that he was beaten because uh, didn't even like make us mad at all or we we're even confused about that because we were watching the movie so when we saw people's arguments like oh it makes no sense he's so weak it's like we're like wait what like we were co- actually confused like why are people upset i don't understand but then when we realized like, oh they didn't somehow they missed the fact that he was yeah. bleeding out of his side yeah i guess <laughs> yeah, i guess they it's... thought he just like Fell the one, dropped, a, tripped, and fell the one knee, <laughs> oh, and then walked out of the building. Yeah, 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 it missed me. It missed me. Don't worry, guys. I'm fine. Like, yeah, so yeah. basically, you're you're talking about like uh, crazy chaos on top of a wound, like a severe wound, yes. on top of the fact that he's not a fully trained like mm-hmm. Sith. So, mm-hmm. uh, like, and then he, yeah, so it's obvious that he's not going to be like a crazy lightsaber duelist. He's not going to mm-hmm. win, you know, uh, like kind of a a big fight like that and everything. And there's also the fact that it's like, oh, he's, you know, Finn was fighting with him. It's like, no, he was toying with Finn. He was fucking around with him because he was basically just deflecting shit. Yeah. And when shit oh. got real, when Finn got Finn, him, yeah. struck him, that was it. He said, fuck this, and yeah. hit his back, and well, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Done. I, I, I think he, he ended did... that shit in like a second. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, think, I think he underestimated Finn. He's just like, I'm play- like, you're just a shitty stormtrooper. What threat to you? But I was like, oh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like... Yeah, he's like, he's like, you know what? I'm not willing to mess around with you anymore. And yes, yeah, yeah. obviously he's way more skilled than Finn. Like, but but yeah, like I thought it made sense. And again, classic dark side fashion. Somehow he gets disfigured, right? Like at the end of that fight, bam, scar in the face. So I was like, and again, it, uh, as soon as I saw it, it was a pretty, pretty small scar. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. He's gonna be all pasty white, like Vader. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's so gonna. He's not like, gonna hey, look breathing like apparatus. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I gotta wear the mask all times now. Yeah, <laughs> you can't look. Don't look at me. No, but I mean, just thematically, again, like it just. As soon as I saw his pretty face, I'm like, that's going to have a scar at the end. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Writing. And I, and I think one of the best parts, too, is, is that all these people are complaining. It's like, oh, he's a fucking emo pussy and he mm. didn't win that fight and stuff like that. They're going to eat their fucking words mm. in the next movie when he kicks the shit out of everyone. Mm. I guarantee it. Mm. He is just going to be mm. like a force to be reckoned with. Ha, force. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, mm. Okay, so I guess we have to kind of amalgamate some of the other characters yeah. into... Oh. I think first we should talk about Han before we... Well, that's what I was going to oh, say. Okay. Maybe yeah, we'll... he, he, he can fit in with the rest. Yeah, oh, okay. so, okay, so good showing by Harrison Ford all yeah. around, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was it was Very great. memorable. Yeah, yeah. It, it just memorable. brought back a lot of memories, When too. he smirked, like, because, you know, interestingly, when I first saw the first trailer, he was like, Chew, we're home. Surprisingly, that's not what got me. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, Harrison Ford's back, I guess. And again, I loved him in Star Wars. I love him in other movies, too. Harrison Ford's awesome. But... When he got into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and did that smirk, I was like, oh, fuck, you got me, man. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> it yeah. is literally like you could believe that that ship was real, that he was actually a smuggler, that he was actually Han Solo. Yeah, and that it's was like, him. this guy's no longer And that was him yeah. revisiting that right ship like yeah. 30 years later or whatever. Yeah. Like, they, they just He's fucking He's like, I got my it. baby back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and just his, his mannerisms and his quips yeah. and just his, the air about him, like, the... I mean, obviously, he played that character before, but he nailed it again. Like, so many years later, mm -hmm. he just... he It's like he just slipped right back into that role, and yes. he just fucking nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like, just his... He's just such a cocky bastard. Oh, my God. Like, I'll just talk my way out of it. <laughs> yeah. Every time! <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I feel like, uh... I feel like they should have had, like, Mad Recall on the bowcaster just to show why he hadn't uh, used it before. That yeah. would be nice, yes. Those weapons are supposedly Because, like, he, really had never, powerful, he had so. never used it before, yeah. before that. And yeah. it's like, why wouldn't he? It's been, like, so yeah. long. <laughs> well, you know, I, think it, I think it came down to the fact that it was just, it was Chewie's weapon. Yeah. It just yeah. was never yeah. really a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Han had his heavy blaster. Like, yeah, that's, that was his weapon of choice. Yeah. So. Plus, Wookiees are incredibly protective of their stuff and their own. And, that's again, true. the fact yeah. that... He was willing to give it to Han again. Just shows how much they're like how much he cares about Han. Like yeah. they're brothers. The two yeah. of them are brothers at this point. So uh, again, if any, if you asked a, if you asked a Wookiee for a bowcaster, <laughs> you know, if, you're ever, if you're ever downtown, and you happen to come across a Wookiee ask for a bowcaster, it'll rip your arms off. It'll laugh at you. It'll it will just like it, it'll be like no, what the fuck. Yeah. But so yeah, like again, he would probably never think to even give it to Han unless Han asks. And again, the two of them are so close and connected. He's like, yeah, sure, try it out. No, no, so, right. <laughs> yeah, again, sorry, that's like yeah. extended universe bullshit. Yeah, I was just, yeah. I was just kind of wondering, like, oh, it's sure. like, it's, oh, you never used it. It's totally legit. And like, I was thinking, maybe if there was like mad recoil or something, there'd be a reason right. why he would never have touched it. Yeah. I would love if that was the case. <laughs> I, like, really like, I love shit. that guy. Holy shit! But, <laughs> but then he's like, "Oh, that was fun, though." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like this. just going back yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be awesome. What about when he was between like uh, those two gangs or whatever? Oh man, just that was wow. yeah. But that was the thing is that um, if you had never seen a Star Wars movie prior to that. Mm -hmm that scene perfectly set up who Han Solo is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That just showed through and through who he is and what he does. Like, that's... Yeah, they only need, like, six lines to be able to do that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, he's... How many times he screwed us over <laughs> pretty much? It's like, okay, yeah. well, whatever. I didn't even make a deal with Kanji Club. Tell that to Kanji Club. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's always getting himself into shit like that. <laughs> For sure. And, oh, oh, that and, uh, and I mean, Chewie was Chewie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So great to see him back. Yeah. I love Chewie, and it was... What I always liked about Chewie, granted, I will still always be pissed that he didn't get a medal at the end of A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just seeing him... <laughs> <laughs> but just seeing him back in there with everybody, and it's just like, man... He, he, again, Chewie is... He may be a secondary character, but he's so much personality. And what I really like is the way that he interacts with people, especially people who understand him, mm -hmm. where he says something. And then the character... Uh, again, it's a simple trick of... Uh, uh, any like visual medium or whatever where a character's talking in a way a language that you don't understand and it's not being translated but the character responds in a natural way and enough for you to get an idea of what that said character said oh it's it's almost like Groot in yes uh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely absolutely <laughs> exactly. like Groot, Groot yeah. is a uh, Groot is a perfect type of chewy analog that's kind of yeah. what I was thinking when I saw Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy right and Again, like when the character responds to him, and the way he, and Chewie not quite as much because it's not he's you know Groot's different because he's saying actual like English that we understand, yeah. while Chewie's just make like making these uh, these noises. But again, the inflection, the way he moves, the way he is mannerisms, you have a bit of an idea what he's saying or what he might be saying, mm -hmm. or a way he reacts to something, right? And that's just. Ah, oh, he's just so good. He's just a great character. Yeah, he's scary too. He's so badass. <laughs> All right, so. Um... Yeah, is there kind of any other uh, well, well, characters you want to go over here? Or? Well, uh, we already pretty much talked about Leia. We could yeah, well, just, head in the direction of 
more dark side character. Uh, well, sh- like, just cause... just just before we do that though, I just yeah. did want to say I people complain about the scene with Leanne Han when they met up. I yeah. kind of liked it. It was sweet and it was restrained because mm-hmm. there's pain between them. Well, yeah, so, obviously, because yeah. there's the, yeah. the lost son, as it were, and mm-hmm. they're obviously split up, so, <laughs> you know, there's that shit going on and stuff like that. It's, mm-hmm. Like, of course, it's going to be a little awkward, and, yeah. you know, they have to kind of talk through it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, do you want to talk Dark Side, or do you want to go with Poe? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Poe or Phasma? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Uh, do I get to choose? Yeah. I yeah. will choose Poe every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Poe. Dad, okay, you, you so I, I heard an interesting bit about Poe uh, that when they were writing the movie, and I think even mm-hmm, when they were mm-hmm. filming it, is that Poe was actually supposed to die. Yes. Uh, not just die, like, you know, in, like, a big battle or something like that. He was literally supposed to be dead when the TIE fighter crashed. Yes. So, uh, I'm just going to say I'm glad that they changed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably he just stole the scene, and well, then he, they were just like, we that was that, was ex- that was exactly yeah. it, is they basically, he was so charismatic, and people kind of reacted to what he was doing they're like people like this guy i think we should keep him around so mm-hmm. so yeah um so i should say i'm pretty excited that uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> that and he even, stuck around and even then like a guy like him doesn't die that easily no of course like, not yeah. and that's the thing is he was almost like he's almost like a new han solo which i got real excited for because mm-hmm. han solo was my favorite character yeah. so oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that han solo Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, okay. Everyone knows. Oh, okay. well, I, well, I'm sure it'll come up in some kind of conversation. Oh, fair enough. Talking about it anyway, fine. I'll we go back okay, to Chewie. Well, when Chewie always... shoots Kylo, <laughs> Kylo stabbed a certain somebody. <laughs> Basically, yeah, let's sorry, talk. sorry, no, for sure. Sorry, I apologize. Just thinking back at this yeah. point, we talked about some of our favorite parts about the movie, and we've been talking about characters this whole time. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. we could talk about the movie as a whole after this. No, then, for sure, for sure. But, uh, yeah, uh, but anyways, yeah. So Poe. Um, He's he's just fucking awesome. He mm-hmm. is the he's the new Han Solo yes. basically. Um, obviously, kind of a different role oh, than sure. a smuggler. Mm-hmm. Although he might kind of I think slip into that kind of role, mm-hmm. um, especially with them kind of owning the Millennium Falcon now and everything. I could easily see, you know, Finn kind of doing his thing, uh, Poe piloting the Millennium Falcon and stuff like that, and then Ray doing her lightsaber Jedi thing and stuff like that, and kind of making that that team. Mm-hmm. So I think that'd be really cool. But either way, um, yeah, just such a such a charismatic character. Um, out of any character or out of any actor that they hired for this movie, mm. he feels like Star Wars. And it's because for some reason, even in like when I see him on like a cover of a magazine or something like that, he looks like he's from the 70s. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like <laughs> the hair, the, the skin tone, the just the, his look and everything like that. He looks like he's right out of the 70s. And I think that really plants him in that universe mm-hmm. because obviously Star Wars started then. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I th- I think they just picked such a good character, like a good actor for that. Uh, Os- Oscar Isaac is an incredibly diverse actor, and he can play like different races, different and different ages, and different types of characters coming to different places so well. Like he is one of those actors has he, that has he been in, in a lot of stuff before. He, he actually has. Like oh man, uh, you know I'm gonna pull up his IMDb page so we can so we can keep talking. But yeah, like because it was like when I saw him in that, I was just like, mm-hmm. I don't, I have no idea who you, this guy is, but I want to know. There's like, a good I hope chance. he gets. I mean, obviously, it's it's probably gonna happen now because mm-hmm. of the huge popularity of the film. But at this point, I think he's basically all these actors are going to get a lot of work after this i think oh yes for sure you know it's funny because you'll actually probably have seen some of these movies but you won't have realized like he's been in them um wow actually some of these movies like again he was in drive i know he was in sucker punch he was actually that creepy guy oh uh he was in Ro- he was prince john in robin hood uh <laughs> let's see he was in agora which like nobody watched uh let's see what else i guess he showed up in many different tv shows as well but yeah, like he's he's just been kind of like he's just been kind of like all over the place. Uh, let's see, who's also in the Born Legacy? I don't oh. even remember that. He was outcome number three. I think he was one of the guys that uh, he had to fight. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that was the one with um, Jeremy Renner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like, and then he was inside uh, Lu- uh, uh, Lewin Davis, which actually was pretty popular when it came out. I never actually watched it though. Uh, he was in Ex Machina, if you watch that one. No, I really want to see that oh, one. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, he's So I'll definitely recognize him now when yes. I go to, go to watch it. Yeah. So but yeah, either way, mm-hmm. um, you know, just a really awesome character. And I love, um, 
Yeah, and then just the whole romance between him and Finn is just a mm-hmm. next level shit. So it's oh. it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see like kind of what happens with them too. Because I mean, just like Finn is kind of you don't really know where they're gonna go with mm-hmm. him. Same thing with Poe. Because I mean, like they have uh, you know, they're kind of like what was it again? Not the rebels, but it was like oh, uh, they're, they're the resistance. The resistance. Yeah. yeah. So they have the. They're a little resistance, which is very little. I mean, literally, it's like that group of X-Wing pilots. That's they're it. tiny. Like, they yeah. are literally a... Like, they're basically a uh, group of, like... I wouldn't say terrorists, but they are... Um, they're freedom fighters. They're, they're freedom mm-hmm. fighters because, I, again, this is a bit lore stuff, but the thing is that the First Order was basically illegally amassing um, weapons and forces on the outer rims of the galaxy, and the whole... Uh, Senate was basically like, oh, we don't care. Like, they're nothing. They're just a small group of extremists. And Leia's is like, this is going to be real bad. So she brought the Resistance. And the Resistance is a very small group that is technically not associated with the with the <laughs> Republic, right? But yeah. they're, just like you say, that small group, that was them. That mm-hmm. was it. Yeah. They're tiny. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see kind of like where they go with that if mm-hmm. he becomes... Uh, maybe kind of the leader of that group, or if he kind of branches off and goes with the, you know the other characters or something like that. Mm. So yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see what happens. But overall, I mean, um, mm. yeah, just just awesome character, mm. and uh, can't wait to see more of him. Yes, absolutely. Um, I love that scene where uh, they were at Maz Kanata's palace and he was flying in his X-wing and took out like freaking nine Tie Fighters while while Finn's running around. I was like, that's one hell of a pilot. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that shit was well, that was some next level no, shit. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, do you have anything to say about Poe? Uh, you... Other than he's awesome, not really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, it was just, he, yeah. he was so charismatic, he just stole the scene every time he was in it, pretty much. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Good character. I hope he stays as an X Wing pilot and just like is pretty much boss throughout the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of where I was going with that, with it being like he's such a hotshot pilot. I think maybe if the resistance does kind of fall or he separates, I think he could easily take over the Millennium Falcon and then pilot the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> maybe give it a few upgrades or something. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, I guess let's let's go back to the dark side. We can talk about Phasma now because uh, she was a fucking joke. Okay, now like, I don't understand her. Okay, that was here, the one part of the movie. Here's the thing: they uh, now first off, Phasma is played by um, Gwendolyn Christie. By Gwendolyn Christie. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, because I honestly... No, that's actually good. Oh, oh, oh. But that's the thing is, uh, you don't pay for an actress like that to mm-hmm. have her do nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. that means something big is going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Phasma, I think, is going to come back and she's going to be a huge deal mm-hmm. um, in the next film. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of unfortunate that they used her a little more for marketing in this one because... Mm-hmm. Everyone just saw this chrome armor. And yeah, like, it's like chrome armor. She's got to be cool. Yeah, 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 she's... Yeah, that's it. She's yeah. one of my favorites. She's fucking awesome and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, and then she ended up being just a total pushover, which was kind of unfortunate. I thought that was about the only, like, really kind of lazy writing part in the movie because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, she's this, like, big, bad kind of leader of all these stormtroopers and stuff like that. And they just... Two guys, there's a gun to her, and she just shuts off the shield generator mm-hmm. yeah, for, like, yeah. this whole thing. It's like... I don't think so. I don't think that's what would have happened. Uh, they, yeah. I think they could have, and even tried to write that a little different. Even if they like, maybe she tried to run and she had a key on her, and they like knocked her out or stunned her, and then took it or something. Like just mm-hmm. yeah. something yeah. showed that she actually put up a fight. Yeah. Like she didn't yeah. do anything. She in there. gave zero shits. Yeah, yeah. So I think like, they're gonna have to try extra hard to write I her into being a badass. In the you next can one. kind of attribute that to cockiness and being like, oh, that's well, like they can't possibly win, win, right? They can't possibly win. There was that. It's also that. it's not just that part of the movie that bothered me. It was just like. She had a stormtrooper out of line, and she did not fix it in, like, seconds. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like, this guy's out of line, and you just let him run around the establishment for, like, an hour Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. find Poe. Like, fuck, like, put him in a holding cell or some shit, right? That's the thing, though, is, like, there's a lot of stormtroopers on that base. I mean, there's a lot of shit going on, so it's... I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of understand. But she it's definitely like, uh, asserted her dominance right at the start. Like, yeah. when Finn took his helmet off, she's like, you, why do you, you know, why yeah. did you, you were not told to take your helmet off and, like, give me your blaster and, like, all this stuff. So, and he was, like, sweating and panting and, like, yeah. he was scared. Like, you could see the fear in his face with her just standing there. She wasn't doing anything. She wasn't putting her hands on him. She wasn't, like, threatening him. She was literally just giving or, like, asking him questions and giving him orders. And he was, like, he looked like he was scared for his life. So, mm. you can tell. 
that there's something to that character, that there's something going on. Yeah. So yeah, um, it'll be definitely awesome to see like what they actually do with her in the next movie. Um, mm-hmm. I I think she's just gonna there's gonna be like a big scene where she just like takes all her troops down and like storms some fucking city or something, just like wrecks everything. Like yeah, I feel like they have to redeem her in some yeah, fashion because yeah. who knows? Been, maybe she'll grab bit, one of those. She's a bit of a mess in this. Maybe movie. she'll grab one of those mm-hmm. fucking electric tongfas and have a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I, mean, I yeah. want to see her in Finn fight. That'd be amazing. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, that I'm... would be a payback almost. Really, if she found him again and she you know trade her like and then she could fucking go after him and everything yeah. so mm-hmm. it'll just be like a headstone and she died on the planet oh, <laughs> let's, let's hope she doesn't become the like the in movies boba fett right? yeah, like, yeah exactly that was so. kind of the plan though was it like i don't know it, it, people compared her to boba fett right off the bat before the movie even came out yeah but i don't know if that but no, I, th- I think I honestly a, think they will still do a bit of a again because yeah. it's because it, it's going on Christie. I that you don't pay that kind of money to have them just fall in a sarlacc pit. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the look on on oh, both again Finn and um like Finn and and Han when they were just with her or whatever. I'm in charge. Now. I'm in charge. Yeah, yeah. Dot, that was, dot, that was good. Yeah. I like that. And then it he's like, just like do, "Do you guys have a trash?" And he looked like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. He's like, "Do you guys have a trash compactor?" And it's like, "Oh yeah, we do." Yeah. <laughs> like it, at least it lends yeah. some humor. But and again, I totally agree with you, Gary. That's the humor though. Finn delivered that humor and mm-hmm. he always did throughout the whole mm-hmm. film. And yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, no, but I, I definitely agree with you, Gary. I, I really would like to see Phasma, you know, come back in a big way in the next one. Yeah. Possibly strike back. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's no. the thing. Is, and that's <laughs> kind of... Uh, that's, that's what I was talking about, though, is I guarantee that just like the cycle of 4, 5, and 6, yeah. this is going to be the cycle of the second yeah. movie, or number 8 in this case, mm-hmm. uh, is going to be um, just the First Order, I think, just bringing that Iron Fist down yeah. and crushing the Resistance and, like, showing their utter dominance over everything. Yeah. And everything is just going to be in broken shards at the end of that movie, mm-hmm. only to be built up in yeah. in Episode Nine at that point. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, you look at, look at, uh, at Empire, mm-hmm. and by the end of that movie... Uh, everyone's on the fucking run. Oh, Han yeah. Solo's encased in carbonite. Like shit's going down. Yeah, that was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. So got so. cut off. No, it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, what about Hux? What did you guys think of? Uh... Oh yeah, I I thought Hux was, uh, was. I don't think it was that bad. Like oh. some people really hate him. I was he just was like, great. But that's yeah, the thing. I was like, this he... guy's just like breaking balls all over. Oh, the place. He's awesome. <laughs> that's the thing. Hux. People hate him. He yeah. did his job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's he, true. He's because he was Nazi. supposed to be that like little wiener admiral yeah. kind of guy that you're supposed to hate because yeah. it's just like, man, I'm always yeah. right. And, uh, I did this and I'm awesome and like. Yes, yeah, so that was basically his deal, mm. and he did an excellent job of it. You no, know, with, with parallels to again the New Hope, uh, we had Darth Vader and we had Tarkin, and the, yeah. just I actually really like Tarkin. Um, not Tarkin Tar- was much more reserved, he, though. Exactly, mm. he's much more reserved. And if you go back, even in the Clone Wars, Tarkin and Anakin met like well. Anakin was still a Jedi, and Tarkin was like pretty, very pragmatic, and kind of like you could tell this guy was like shouldn't be trusted, but. And it's like, I kind of like the way you think. Yeah. So as far as Tarkin, like Tarkin is the closest thing to Darth Vader has uh, that's a friend. Like mm-hmm. that is the, the closest that he has the friend, essentially. Right. That's I his love, counsel. That's his counsel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And again, like they're on similar level of authority, but they don't like tell each other what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Hux, and, Hux has a similar role, but they went in a different direction where the two of them just hate each other. Yeah, exactly. Right? And it's like, we don't need your weird shaman magic. We got our stormtroopers, and we're also Nazis. Yeah, it's like, we got this. Yeah. Look at this giant planet of a gun. <laughs> giant planet gun. <laughs> Point and shoot. It's real it's great. Like, yeah, we got this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I, I, again, his, like, uh, you know, his crazy Nazi speech was super intense, and he got super into it, and you're like, holy shit, this guy's nuts. But again, like... Yeah, and that's the thing, mm. it was very well delivered, because it's like, not only was he, you know, stepping on toes and showing, kind of, showing his dominance and everything like that, mm-hmm. but yeah, that whole rousing mm-hmm. Nazi-esque speech mm-hmm. near the end there was, it was very well done, mm-hmm. like, it was actually gave me chills because I was like, yeah. wow, these guys fucking mean business. They're, they're going to they're gonna fuck some shit up. <laughs> no, for, what people overlook often is that the Empire, yeah, they're basically space Nazis. And then yeah. the First Order also pretty much space Nazis. Like, these guys are zealots. They mm-hmm. are zealots. And that is, and Hux performed that really well. Mm-hmm. Probably more so than any other representation of the Empire in the movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... Okay, uh, I guess uh, even though the, the character wasn't shown all that much, or we don't know much about him, it's still kind of interesting to talk about him. Let's talk about Snoke. Okay. Uh, just because, 
I don't know, you seem to know a little bit more about extended stuff. Uh, does, does Snoke play into that You role, know what? Or? I will admit to knowing very little about Snoke. I was thinking, and I don't... I, I have no way of knowing I'm trying. I was actually thinking he might actually be Darth Plagueis, okay. who is uh, who was the master of Palpatine. Yeah. And the thing yeah. about Darth Plagueis is, like, as legends have it, is that he was able to control the dark side like no other where mm-hmm. he could basically create life and bring back the dead bring back the dead or stop people from dying yeah because they had reference place in episode three yes. i think yeah. yeah yeah and and essentially like uh, i'm thinking potentially i could totally be wrong but that the uh, the city has probably tried to kill Plagueis, right because that's what you do when you're sick you kill your master yeah that's exactly. that's that's part of their religion mm-hmm. um but I think that may, it could be maybe Plagueis didn't die. Maybe he came back as he Snoke. He stopped death. He stopped death. Yeah, exactly. And, like, look at Snoke, the guy. I mean, and he again, looks fucked He looks frail like yeah. and old. Like, like, he's just like... Well, he looks like a zombie. And there's a yeah, gash so. in his head, for yeah. crying out loud. I mean, who knows? Maybe freaking the city like, slammed his face in with a lightsaber. It's like, you're probably dead. I mean, yeah. who could survive that? The yeah. Plagueis is like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need an apple. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Cause I, need, I need 50 years to reverse this shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, again, I will admit to not knowing a whole lot about Snoke. Um, I would say as far as the characters go, he probably was the one that worked for me the least. Um, mm-hmm. and mostly because he was so nebulous. And again, like when you see Sidious for the first time in the hologram, like you see, you see an actual man, like you're seeing an actual human. Yeah. Well, this is a completely CG character. Yeah. And again, a- like. But the thing is that also he's a hologram. So when we saw Gollum for the first time interacting with the Hobbit stuff like that, it was crazy. Like holy shit, this character looks real. Yeah. He's interacting with them. This it was not quite like that because again he was a hologram. That was made yeah. very clear. But yeah. when he first showed up the hologram, he's huge. And at first yeah, I was like, man, hologram. he's right. And I was like, this guy is he really big? And then it's like turned out the hologram. It's like okay, so but is he really big? Like yeah, you is... don't you get no indication of anything about yeah, that's him the thing other is, than what he looks like. I, no, I think it's, no it's, scale or anything. Again, yeah. that's why I kind of made the reference of the of Wizard of Oz. Yes, yeah. his his hologram is very smoke and mirrors. I yeah. think he is just a normal sized guy. Uh, guy in a room, some kind of yeah, jet, yeah. <laughs> he's some some kind of Sith ma- Lord Master kind uh, of thing. Get a microphone, but yeah, <laughs> uh, you got the voice in. But yeah, the whole the whole Plagueis thing, very very interesting. Like I, I'm kind of hoping that's what it, it is. Cause that's that where a lot of the cool. rumors are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So yeah, that'd be very interesting Cause, to see. Because it it seems to fit better than just some random, some big uh, big baddie showing up out of nowhere. Really. Yeah. yeah. Like, because there's no other real place where he could come from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I mean, if he's gonna be like a normal looking guy and stuff like that, they can definitely stick a guy in some prosthetics at that point and actually mm-hmm. have a physical person in front of them. Mm-hmm. Um. Especially because I'm hoping it's Andy Circus because that oh. guy's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's amazing, and yeah, they can't they can't not have it be Andy Circus now. Like his yeah. performance again with not a whole lot to do, his voice and it and and the way he he lo- he was very imposing nonetheless. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. mean, I think my favorite line was just like when he's asking about Ray's, like bring her to me. <laughs> and I say it, but it sounds ridiculous, but like. The way he you're not drew, twenty feet tall. Well, I'm not. I'm not twenty feet tall. I'm not Andy Circus, right? Like the way he drew that out, like almost any, any that line could have sounded ridiculous. But when he was saying that, you're just like, oh Jesus, what what's he planning? Yeah. Like maybe this is like if he got Ray, maybe he'd be like, how oh, you're more powerful than the Force than than Kylo Ren. Hey Kylo Ren, could you pick up those? See you later, there? Kylo. <laughs> 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 All right, Ray, you're training with me now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here, kid. He only wants the most the most powerful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So and Kylo crawls back to Luke, and Luke's like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> Cuts off his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that'd be, that'd be the second the episode is the fall of Kylo. Yeah. And then the third episode's rebuilding. Oh, God. That's so good. How does it feel, bitch? Yeah. Oh my god. But uh yeah, so uh, actually speak a look, do we wanna quickly talk about well I guess there's other people we can talk about before, but um yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what yeah, I guess just fire off whatever really else because they're just Maz. I want to talk about Maz. Maz. Oh yeah, go for it. Let's yeah. let's talk about Maz. Um, I really I can never rem- uh, pronounce the woman's last name, but Lupita, I believe, is her first name. The woman who portrayed Maz, uh, she Ni- Ni- Niango, I believe. Uh, but she is awesome. Again, if you haven't seen five, uh, Twelve Years a Slave, watch it. She's amazing in that movie. Um, somehow she brought a certain life to Maz that um I 
didn't really expect. Not that I thought she'd do a bad job so much as like, wow, I want to see more of this character. Yeah, I that's what I was to... saying like right yeah. at the start too because yes. I thought like this character came out of nowhere mm -hmm. and she's instantly interesting. Mm -hmm. Like she has stories to tell and everything like that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I loved her and especially with like <laughs> Han, it's like women always know, like they always find out. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> and again, like in Maz, it's just like, something wrong with you. Yeah. I can just tell by looking at you. Yeah. And, uh, well, again, she had to zoom in. Well, she, yeah, she had to <laughs> zoom in real time. Like, crawl across the table. But yeah. again, like this character sold it. Like she's kind of like that sage type character, but yeah. uh, uh, just like Yoda sold it years ago, she's selling it right now. And you, and one thing they really focused on when developing her design was her eyes. Like they're uh, some of the creepiest human, uh, human like eyes I've seen mm -hmm. in CG. And, Again, it's interesting because, of course, oftentimes when it comes to CG, the Uncanny Valley is usually around the eyes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, again, they made an alien-looking character with the eyes were the most human part about her, and yeah. that really gave her a ton of personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that? they've gotten a lot better with CG eyes. Oh, like, yes. It is nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. They can make a soul. In eyes, <laughs> <laughs> which oh, is God. scary as oh. fuck. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, man, she was, she was just great. So, yeah, loved her. Um, any any other characters that you want to talk about? Not that I can really think of right now. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think we covered most of bases. Oh wait, yeah. wait! What about Daniel Craig? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drop my blaster. I, I, I actually there. think it's really cool that they put in so many cameras there is a like that. Like, shit, it ton is of fucking cameras. awesome. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, like, what it for people that didn't know the uh, when Ray is locked in the chair and there's the single stormtrooper in the room with her. That single stormtrooper is actually, 007. Is actually 007, yeah. Mr. Daniel Craig. His his code is JB007. That's right. For yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck's yeah. sake. Um, and yeah, and, and I had kind of people were just like, oh, well, that's you know only rumor and stuff. It's like no, it's been confirmed that was actually Daniel Craig. Apparently, it had to do with him shooting movie at a similar or like a nearby location. And as fans of Daniel Craig know, he's a huge Star Wars nerd too. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure he was. It was basically he was probably just like, "Let me do this." It, well, it was it was kind of fate. He was filming yeah. there. He was just like, "Oh my god, Star Wars! Can I check it out?" And they're like, "Do you want to be in the movie?" And it's like, "Fuck yeah, I do." <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, with a movie like that. Any stars you find who yeah. are fans of it will just be like, "I am oh. fucking in." There's yeah, because apparently yeah. Um, the fat slob guy that was giving out the yeah. quarter meals or whatever was Simon Pegg. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of people from like I I heard there are like a few from Game of Thrones in there. Yeah, well Well there's Gwendolyn well, Christie obviously. Well, yeah. <laughs> Even the guy who was I can't remember but the, the... Some people in the ca cantina. Like oh, really? there's some people in the costumes, costumes and shit. Stuff? And then the guy who was like when those guys that were cornering Han Solo and Chewie, yeah, um, the, not the, the kanji Asian club. guy. Well, no, the, the Asian guys. The two Asian guys were actually from the raid. Okay. Two of the Asian guys okay. in kanji club, but that's that's that was, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I knew yeah. I recognized them from but, somewhere. But the guy who was talking with the with the European accent, I'm not sure. I think it might be Scottish, but I'm the worst with accents. Yeah. In any case, yeah. that guy he was actually from Game of Thrones. He was uh, that uh, um, Jojen. Uh, whatever his name is, but Jojen was his name, and he's from Game of Thrones as well. Okay. So that's kind of yeah. neat. There were a lot of cool cameos. There was, yeah, there's there's a ton, and like uh, even the the woman who like uh, the woman who was healing Chewbacca there, she's uh, 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 Christopher Lee's niece, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> and she's an actor, and then. Uh, Billy Lord, who is Carrie Fisher's daughter, she was also very featured in Scre Green Queen. She was actually on one of the rebels. And yeah, she was one of the ones in the base. Yeah, oh, she was okay. just there, <laughs> rad. She was just always around. Like, I honestly, like, I just, because I, I love Screen Queen, so I was just kind of watching it. So I was like, wait! And then she was like, gone in a second. I was like, uh... <laughs> did I just... I was blackout? Anyway, so yeah, there's a ton of awesome Easter eggs. Like, mm -hmm. a ton of weird cameos that are just there. Mm -hmm. And it's just... Oh, it's so and... I guess Mark Hamill. Oh, what? He was there, too? Uh, <laughs> kind of. He, he had a minuscule appearance. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came back as the Joker? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, that was, so, okay, what do you guys think of that scene? Because uh, uh, apparently there's a lot of people that thought it was weird and he, the wished he said something. Um, it's okay. not so much that I wanted him to say something. I wanted her to say something. Mm. Because this is, okay, this is my belief in uh, kind of like again, how the Force works and, mm -hmm. and stuff that has been shown in movies and canonical stuff and everything like yeah. that, is that 
Force users not only can sense other beings, but they can especially sense um, beings that have affected them in some way, especially yeah. family members. Mm -hmm. So I think what should have happened, if this is what's happening in the story and everything mm -hmm. like that, which is everything's pointing to yes, mm -hmm. uh, is that she is Luke's daughter, and basically when she walks up and she is holding the lightsaber out for him and he has that horrified kind of look on his face, mm -hmm. it's not just because oh no, a Jedi has found me and they're trying to get me to train them, yeah. she should have said, father, mm. or father, like mm. something like that. And and as long as that's the direction they're going in, I the think thing that's is, what I don't think happened. she knows. She doesn't remember the guys, but her, that's the, thing the person is, she's waiting for, her she's, the face. She's a force user. I think, if anything, she should be feeling something at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, Even if she's not exactly sure what it is, I think something should lead her towards that. But mm -hmm. maybe maybe they're going to write in that's why she didn't say anything yet. Maybe mm -hmm. she doesn't mm -hmm. know because, you know, the force is still kind of yeah. lost on her. She's I think, just learning how to use it. Yeah. I actually like that scene a lot because nothing was said and because you mentioned that horrified look on his face yeah. right mm -hmm. he's probably like it's finally the time and yeah. it's, holy yeah. shit this is the like, day i've been dreading not... that when i have to teach yeah. my daughter how to be a jedi basically. and it's like this is not what he ever wanted to do yeah, yeah. Sort it's, of like, it's bad that it came to this it's it like i already been... like yeah. i already fucked up han's son what am i going to do to my own yeah. daughter now? yeah like yeah i i i like the idea that he's just like i hate that things have gotten so bad that this is like i would have liked to be a hermit forever, essentially. Yeah. He's like, I would have, if, if... He looks like he would have. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was sure. in full hermit mode. <laughs> you never go full hermit. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised but... he was wearing pants. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> oh my god. Best Twitter account. Just turn around, not wear pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just like, I wasn't expecting that company. That was the horrified look on his face. <laughs> I am like, not shit, wearing pants. Shit, I've been caught. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously, guys. Look up the Twitter feed of, uh, I think it's like Lonely Luke and also Emo Kyle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. So yeah, funny. They are very well right Yeah, now. <laughs> they're so good. But um, I kind of like the idea that, yeah, like I said, he's horrified that it's come to this point that he, that he's like, I would have liked it if I it could have stayed out here on my own because that would mean the universe, the galaxy isn't in peril. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm kind of okay with the silence um, just because, like, I feel like, I, maybe it's just me, but I, I mean, like, I, I feel like, like, well, I mean, when I say maybe it's just me, I can only say for my own personal thoughts, but I, it felt like kind of a powerful moment for both of them, because Luke is like, I've been trying to get out of the galaxy, and they're, I, I'm being kind of drawn back into this whole conflict, and I'm not sure that I can help, because I really fucked things up. Yeah. And for Ray, it's just like, I am going out into the galaxy and learning things, and about to learn things I never even knew or really understood. Mm -hmm. And so for both of them, it was this monumental moment that neither of them really could um, quite find the words for. So, and I, I, I don't know. I feel like it was, I'm kind of okay with them kind of just staring at each other. Yeah, like I'm okay I'm with like, it, but I would have been okay with it if they had, yeah. you know, if they had just had one thing or something. Like sure. That, yeah, so. and, but mm -hmm. that's exactly the thing because like, You've just watched this movie and you're craving for more, but I, at the end, that so is kind of there, yeah. so <laughs> it's like the last part of this movie. You're just like, I need something. I need one more thing, just one more thing. Yeah, and you don't get that one thing, but it leads you a cliffhanger for the next one. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what they're going mm -hmm. for. Like yeah. these these directors know exactly what they're doing. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a reason they didn't do anything there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I keep mean, you like, Jones until the next one. Ah! Well, yeah, because you, <laughs> you have all those cliffhangers and yeah. all that shit that's yeah. happening and like that, and that's just in the first movie. Ugh. So, yeah. <laughs> thank God for Rogue One at the end of this year. So <laughs> I swear to God. Yes, thank you Disney for making for giving <sighs> us Star Wars every year. Now, yeah. So that that'll be it gives us something to at least keep our mind. We off thank of. you for this bounty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you guys, hunter? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about some other random Star Wars stuff for a quick minute here. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys more excited for a Boba Fett movie or a Han Solo movie? Weirdly enough, um, it's weird. I honestly would, you know, honest. I I think I'm equal. Or how, for about, both. how about Rogue One movie? Like I, I'm more excited. Those are, those are the yeah, three kind of planned ones. Yes, right I'm now. more excited for Rogue One than the other two. Um, sometimes I again with the prequels, it's a little bit worrying. Granted, I know it's a totally different team, but sometimes. I'm okay with them not going back and showing us the origin. Like, if I've seen already seen some Boba Fett stuff with uh, with uh, Clone Wars, which is mm -hmm. canon. Yeah. Um, if they do a Boba Fett movie, I hope they do it after Jedi Returns. Like, I don't want to see how he became Boba Fett. Like, no, I'd no, love no, to that's see him. after he escapes 
Oh, the, the Sarlacc, Sarlacc pit. pit. Okay. That's what I. I'm almost certain that's what they're okay. going for. I hope because so. they did. They cover all that shit in like Clone Wars and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. They, they know like they know where he came from. They know mm. who he is. Like who Django is and everything yeah. all that shit. Mm-hmm. So like they need to continue that yes. story, especially for the fans that actually like Boba Fett and they you know didn't allow him to die in that Sarlacc <laughs> pit. <laughs> uh, just falls in. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Well, if that's the case, then yeah. Well, I mean, Rogue One's still the one I'm most excited for because I love the fact of an ensemble Star Wars movie about a ragtag group of rebels. Like that's yeah. just that is my fucking dream. Yeah. So that one's the most exciting to me. Next would be Boba Fett, as long as it's after like after Return of the Jedi. Uh, I'd love to see them messing stuff up and maybe even meeting with some other Mandalorians and get to know learn a little bit more about the Mandalorian culture in a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because that's mm-hmm. the thing is they have. Mm-hmm. Such a uh, like a kind of a rich history. Oh and yeah, tons of people love those characters. I mean, who doesn't like the bounty hunters and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. all the scum and villainy in mm-hmm. all these movies? It's like that's the one I'm waiting for. You mm-hmm. see all those assholes, like all that scum and villainy, sitting in those cantinas and stuff. Yeah. I want to know their fucking oh, yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, each of the bounty hunters um, in. Uh, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, that well, yeah, you're yeah, looking at Bosk and IG88 yeah. and like uh, mm. and and Boba Fett, like yeah. all those guys, like mm. like get those guys to do like a Suicide Squad oh, type movie or something. No, I want it. <laughs> Don't say it, Dan. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I feel like I feel like the Han Solo thing should really be just a TV series about his like random bounty hunter, <laughs> hunter like his random mm-hmm. hijinks throughout the universe. Yeah. I'd watch that, and that would make a more sense than a movie. Yeah. yeah, and so I would have to say the Boba Fett one, just because mm-hmm. like, like you were saying, it's just like mm-hmm. there's so much history there, and like that's that's a character that was really loved in the first first like series, but mm-hmm. didn't really get much fleshing out until the expanded universe. Yeah, so this is a chance for them to like flesh it out for everybody. Mm-hmm. So. It, it's yeah, I'd be more excited about that. I hear. Yeah, it's a tough call for me because I'm usually not a fan of like going back to an origin story when I've seen so much of a character already. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. Hansel is like my favorite, so mm-hmm. it, it's it really is a hard toss up because I Hansel is my favorite character. Uh, Boba Fett showing after the Sarak pit and showing what a badass he is. I love the bounty hunters. I love the scum and villainy and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I. Uh, I would totally be down for that movie. And then, uh, yeah, and Rogue Squadron was, like, one of my favorite mm, Star Wars games. So, so good. To see a Rogue One movie based on, like, these, you know, rebels mm-hmm. in their X-Wings doing all this, like, kind of resistance stuff and everything like that. Like, yeah, I, I'm i down with all of them, basically. <laughs> like, it's it's really hard to pick. Yeah, for sure. I can't, like, it's, it's so super exciting just knowing that these are coming and... That we're kind of getting a Star Wars movie every year, and again, that may, but they planned it out really well. And again, Disney, but they're, they're different yeah, though. That's the that's thing. Exactly is it. It's not just like yeah, like like Marvel. It's not that they've gone stale, but they're running everything into each other. So, which makes sense with what their big overall plan was. They yeah. want all these things to merge because mm-hmm. it makes sense in that universe. Star Wars is so vast mm-hmm. that they could make a different movie about different character or a different set of characters. Every year for like ten fucking years, and they, they could never... already make a Poe movie. Well, yeah, they exactly. have God. enough for that. And, and that's the thing is, they could do <laughs> yes, they a movie every year for like ten years straight, and those characters would never even have to meet each other, mm-hmm. and they yeah. would all be interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it just shows how vast that universe is, and and mm-hmm. how much fun they can have with it. For sure, for sure. Oh boy. And so, what do you think the ride is going to be like at uh, Disneyland? Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's a question. What is going to happen on now, that ride? Now, is it a ride? Or I thought they were making like Star Wars Land. Are they making a whole land? I think they're making Jesus a full Christ. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you know they made Harry Potter Land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing right. a Star Wars Oh, like, shit. Oh, so. no. That's, uh, well, I know. Eventually, I have to go there sometime. Yeah, <laughs> that'd, be pretty, I mean, that'd be pretty fucking cool. Uh, yeah. I, I, Disney, Disney, uh, Disneyland's awesome. I've never <laughs> really had that much desire to go, but that one made me want to go. Uh, no, no, that one definitely more, because it's themed to yeah. what you, like... Yeah. what you enjoy and everything like that. I've been sure. to Disneyland before. And that one and a Marvel one. It was okay. Was pretty um, pretty uh, intense. Marvel one would be awesome. Star mm-hmm. Wars. I still want to go to Legoland too. Yeah, like that, that, yeah that would be awesome. But yeah, wow. just all that all that stuff like that. Yeah, but it, it's just, mm-hmm. you know what? 
a lot of people were scared at the start when Disney bought Star Wars, Henry, but yeah. it's in good hands. Good on you, Disney. You're you are spending your money wisely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I I wasn't like worried just because again, again, once there's something to be said about the way they handle Marvel movies, and yes, yes there are certain too. aspects of them definitely do feel quite samey, but they are the ones that are good are really good, and again, they know what they're doing when it comes to making movies. They've been doing it for a while, guys. So just yeah. just don't worry about it. Besides, somebody else screwed the Star Wars long before they, they had <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. let's just keep that in mind. Let's yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about Lucas being butthurt over this one. Oh, huh? yeah, he, yeah, the poor man. You know, to, I, I he will... Apolog- he apologized. He apologized. <laughs> you can't see the air quote, but he apologized. Yeah, for the white slavers comment. Like, you know, I, I can at least appreciate the fact that, you know, whatever, what have you, like, uh, you know, he and his team created something amazing, and he's very close to them, um, but he doesn't seem to, like... And it's tough to see that, let that go, not only let that go, but see people change in a way that you don't quite mm-hmm. like. And whatever, like, whatever, however much we, I don't particularly like his vision of Star Wars, um, as shown by the prequels, I can at least appreciate the fact that he's probably heard him quite a bit, because it's like, he loves this thing, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I'm also quite happy he's not involved. In yeah. So. Yeah, because I think that's what it ultimately came down to, is that he... I think he submitted like some yeah some stuff for like these movies, but yeah. then they were just like, you know what, we'll do our own thing. Well, yeah, it's like you we know, keep it in mind. Yeah, no, we're, we, yeah. we got this. Yeah, uh, George, George, can can I call you George? Listen, <laughs> we, we love your ideas. We made some notes. Um, it's all in red, but thanks, thanks. We're gonna do our thing. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, just I'm I'm. Yes, he he seems quite upset, and I always feel like I think I always felt like I felt like this years ago. I think it's when he did said the whole Han shot first, and people want Han to be a bad guy. Like like Han didn't shoot first. Like why do people want him to be a bad guy? I'm just like you know what? I think at this point you're kind of I like he, either he's trolling the fans or he just him and his vision of Star Wars and the fans' vision of Star Wars are just very different. Well, the the problem is is that that's exactly what it was. Is mm-hmm. that his vision was different? It's that when he originally uh, like wrote the loose ideas for the movies mm-hmm. and everything like that. He basically wrote the first one, which yeah. is, you know, it is what it is. It's mm-hmm. entertaining movie and like that. But you notice how, basically, when you asked a, a fan, like, what is your favorite original trilogy movie? Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, it's Empire. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's because he had very little to do with the writing on that. Mm-hmm. He didn't direct that one at all. No. Like, he had the littlest say in that movie. Mm-hmm. So, and that, I think it just goes to show the strength of that. Yes. Is that it's like... Thank you very much for your product, Lucas. But at this point, your vision is not what works with this. It's not what the fans want. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not always always about the fans. No. Want, but no, for the most part, it, it, fans know what they want when it comes to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it shows now. Like, that is... It is what it is. Like, yeah. they made an excellent movie here. They've made over, what, a billion dollars... It's on, close to highest grossing. Yeah, it's insane. Very it's, close. No, no, isn't it over now? Like, isn't Did this it go the, over? This is like... It must have rolled over like yesterday or This is like the top like, grossing hmm. movie of all time. It has made like one billion, ten million dollars. <laughs> like, like this <laughs> thing is just insane. Like how much money it's made. And that I'm going to see if it caught Avatar because it that, was close. Oh yeah, it's past <laughs> Avatar. Did it? Oh yeah, oh. it blew past Avatar. Um... That that's the thing is like this movie just seems unstoppable, and mm-hmm. and the fact that they made their money back like so much more before the movie even launched, and now we're what like a a month after its release, basically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's made over a billion dollars. Yeah, over a billion dollars on one insane. movie. Insane. What is gonna happen with the second movie? I, Two uh, billion? Like <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers, and I, I couldn't I be just, happier. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's um. Yeah, it's just insane. And mm-hmm. I, and again, I think that's why Lucas is just kind of hurt now because he's just like, "Oh, well, that was supposed to be my thing." It's like, yeah, but it wouldn't have been the that thing mm-hmm. if you had made it. So oh, yeah, yeah. It's deal with it. Thing. That is fucking intense. He can, he can go cry into his tens of or hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> that, Skywalker ranch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, tears with money. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he's done a lot of stuff. Oh, before, okay. So I try not to mess up too much. <laughs> but still, Luke, so George Lucas, just sorry, it's yeah. not. It's yours uh, anymore. it's America. Oh, okay. It's highest in America. Hasn't it's third it, right, in the, the it's third in the world right now. Oh, okay, I see. So. Mm. It's yeah. still just released in China a couple days ago. But so. like I said, oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. once that market hits, it's it's like it is, boom. It is done. still being released, and we're a month in. Yeah. So like, how much money is this thing gonna make? Yeah. Like it's just insane. So it's still releasing in China. So yeah. Like 
either i think it was like yesterday so okay or like a couple days ago so mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's gonna be fucking intense yeah. it's gonna, you know i, w- I yeah. was holding off on buying any star wars episode 7 merch until i saw the movie because yeah. like you know heaven forbid the movie no, I, all the merch. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it all no i haven't bought anything yet i'm actually i don't even like i don't want to buy disney infinity but i'm pretty sure i'm gonna buy at least a couple of figures because I just that's, want them for my goddamn desk. Yeah, it's it's the same. Yeah, it's the same collectability as the yeah. the amiibos or whatever. It's yeah. just nice to have that little kind yeah. of statuesque figure there and everything. Yeah. So. Um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I don't know. I guess after oh, two hours of as a whole, I'm pretty sure you know what we think about. The yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. No, we need to go in more detail. I feel like we, we already <laughs> talked about. I, it I, I'm, I'm too, kidding. So. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. After everything's said and done. I give it a two out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a. Eh. It's okay. It's okay. I loved it. Yeah. Five out of five. Yeah. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. I'm very, very pleased. I'm excited to watch it again and again and again on Blu-ray. So Yeah, because there's very few movies I'll actually invest in buying a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is going to be one of them. I'm absolutely going to mm-hmm. buy this on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So I, I can watch it again and again not worry about Netflix either having it or not having it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, you've been watching for movies for a while. Shut up, Netflix! Uh, <laughs> Don't talk about my business. You've been watching the same movie on repeat for seven days. <laughs> are you are, still alive? Are you, still, are you, are you are, a stinking corpse? Yeah, yeah. Should we call the police? Like, Shut up, Netflix! <laughs> Don't judge me. I do me. what I want to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Don't judge me for my lifestyle. Awesome. All right, guys, I think we did it. Yeah. Um, a- any, anything else before we kind of quickly talk about what we've been doing? Um, no, I, I, I think we've... No, I think we hit like two <laughs> hours. Two hours of talking about Star Wars need. is good. Oh um, boy, yeah, yeah. I think we just yeah, need so another I, hour about what we're doing. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll be quick. Oh God, I'm so sorry. It, no, it will, I won't. <laughs> it'll uh, it'll definitely be quick for me, just because um, yeah, my vacation, other than it being a whirlwind vacation of mm-hmm. like going to dinners and mm-hmm. you know hanging out with some friends and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for the most part, is like nerdy stuff I did. Uh, excuse me uh i watched <laughs> one punch man yes finally all, i'm so happy all of one punch man wasn't and, it great oh my god it was well i was you telling you it. the other day like it is yeah it yeah, is literally one of the, the greatest animes i've seen in i don't even know how many years like mm-hmm. it is so well done yeah so entertaining mm-hmm. um yeah, I don't know just the interactions between them and 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 again it, it goes back to the type of anime I like where it never takes itself seriously even in like the big like boss fights and everything like that you already know kind of what's going to happen and it's just fun the whole time. You know what's going to happen because he's so stupidly OP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like they know he's stupidly OP yeah, which yeah. makes it good. Yeah, they just play into that so much. Yeah, exactly. So they just have fun with it the whole time and it's just entertaining to watch just non-stop. Mm-hmm. Like we blew through it in two days. Yeah, so. yeah. It's a nice um, short series. Yeah, and yeah, and it's, it's a shorter series so it's easy to watch. I'm probably going to watch it again. Oh yeah, there's... Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. Um... Oh, we, we watched through Jessica Jones, because um, mm. we, before the holidays, we'd seen, like, up to episode three, and then we, like, kind of took a few weeks off, like, while we were kind of doing everything, and, and then over the vacation, we're like, you know what, fuck it, let's, this is the time to do it, let's hammer through it, and yeah, and we, I think we watched, like, two more episodes, and then, like, the next day, we sat and watched the rest of the episodes, <laughs> <Nice>. so, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a very, very well done series. Mm, I uh, loved it, too. I, I loved it because... Uh, you know, it was very Marvel. Like, you could tell it was one of their products. Um, I liked it because even though you could tell it was set in that kind of Daredevil universe, because it's, you know, kind of same area and everything like that, um, it wasn't Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, props to them on that, because it, it's, I think it can almost be hard to write, you know, shows that basically it not only take place in the same universe, but take place next door to each other, pretty mm-hmm. much, and to not write them like each other. Um, so yeah, they, they did a really, really good job with that. And, uh, and yeah, and just having it have that different feel to it of her being, you know, this so strong yet powerless in a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. And David Tennant was just oh. fucking amazing in that. <laughs> I'm a huge Dr. Hugh fan. Like I love, and he's my favorite doctor. And this is, I think this is his best performance I've ever seen. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is yeah. I've barely got to see him in anything because I, I'm not a Doctor Who fan. So mm-hmm. to actually get to enjoy him in a series like this mm-hmm. was, was something else. Although I want to see him play a good guy now because it's <laughs> like, I. You've seen him be a creeper too much? Well, that was the thing is he was a creeper the whole time. Oh, he's so evil. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to hate you right now, yeah. but I have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so horrifying. Oh, and you know what? A total surprise was 
Carrie Ann Moss was amazing in that too. She was incredible. Yeah, yeah, like just absolutely stellar. I I loved her before this, mm -hmm. but just seeing her in this role, um, she just she nailed it. She did mm -hmm. such a good job. Um, because I did not expect her to be um as core of a character as she was, but yeah, she was in there like the whole time, and mm -hmm. and she actually had an effect on kind of the story and everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, they did a really good job, and uh, <laughs> um. What the hell's his name now? I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy who plays uh, uh, Simpson, the cop. Oh, I can't um, remember the actor's name either. Yeah, he... At first, it was <laughs> like, oh, who is this? He's trying to be Captain America or whatever. So, <laughs> now, I'm a comic book fan, but some of these characters are completely lost on me because they are kind of B-side characters. Yeah, this guy's so like C-level. So, yeah, he was C-level. So, I had to go <laughs> in and look up, like, who this guy was. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, he... They played it to the T, though. I mean, oh, like, yeah. the, the red pill, white pill, blue pill thing, mm -hmm. him looking like that. Like, yeah, they nailed it. He's Nuke or, or whoever he is. Like, he has a couple <sighs> different names for the, yeah. the comics. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they basically nailed that character <laughs> in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, oh, fuck, I can't remember what the hell her name is now. But basically her... her uh, Claire? Her sister, yeah, Claire. Oh, oh her, her sister. Oh, no, that's uh, Patsy. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Patsy. Um, yeah. yeah, Patsy, I'm really excited to see what they do with season two. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, again, I didn't know who, really who that character was supposed to be, if she was just kind of written in for the story or whatever. Sure enough, she's Hellcat. I've yeah. actually heard of Hellcat. Yeah. I just didn't know who the human or, like, the secret right. identity of her was. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, in second season, I'm... I don't know if they're going to go the route exactly of donning costumes, because this one feels like it's trying to stick a little more to mm -hmm. realism. But... Uh, maybe they'll go the Daredevil route and just have very mm -hmm. kind of subtle costumes and everything mm -hmm. like that. But either way, it, I'm really excited to see what happens with that because they are, they have put a lot of these characters in place now, which I was not expecting at all. I thought mm -hmm. it was literally just uh, Purple Man and Jessica Jones and that, and that was it. Yeah. But it seems like they're going in that direction of adding all these other... I mean, Luke Cage getting his own show. Yep. Totally excited. Mm -hmm. Going to see some Iron Fist action too. <gasps> so, um, yeah. So yeah, I I am totally excited for what what direction that's going in right now. Like they're just gonna have this whole, you know, Hell's Kitchen vigilante group going on and everything. Yeah. Like uh, what's the what's the the DC side of that? The Heroes of Tomorrow or whatever. Oh, Legends DC. Of, Legend, oh, come on, I mean, they're they're okay. Legend of Tomorrow. Legend, like, Legends is, of Tomorrow. I yeah. I feel like that's the direction yeah. they're going yeah. in because they are gonna have that kind of a B side of it. They're building all yeah. those heroes and all these like neighborhoods basically mm -hmm. and now they're going to join them in in like one super group at that yeah. point or something so yeah they'll form the defenders yeah so that'll be sweet um yeah but so basically that was it so uh one punch man and jessica jones oh and i just i played a shit ton of rocket league yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So i'm actually getting good at it now so Boy, shit, <laughs> dead. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, yeah, um, basically I started playing, um, Star Wars The Old Republic again, because I'm a sucker. Um, <laughs> I just, I couldn't not do it. I've just, I've been doing that, I've been re-watching The Clone Wars, uh, re some episodes of Rebels, and then just been reading a lot about Star Wars lore, so I'm gonna pick up some of the Star Wars Extended Universe books. Um, I'm knee-deep in it. Like, I, I, I'm really excited because this is reminding me back in the 90s when I was really obsessed with Star Wars and was buying a bunch of the Extended Universe books and reading Young Jedi Knights and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. I said it to my older brother um, before the movie came out because he was still being pretty cynical, and understandably so. But I was like, you know, and I wasn't, like, throwing shade on him for doing this, but I was like, you know what, Cheeto, I'm just excited about, like, I'm really excited about being excited about Star Wars again. And it's so nice to be able to be like that right now. Yeah. And so there's, yeah. and... After, after how hurt we were from the from yeah. episode one, two, and three. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even watch three, to be honest, because I was just like, you don't, got to two or like... Uh, yeah, you, you, you really know, don't have Honestly, to. the best yeah. way to watch it is that, that amalgamation yeah. one that's like two and a half hours or whatever that basically squishes all three of the films together and mm -hmm. just gives you the important bits. That's, yeah. good. That's yeah. definitely the way to watch it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've, I've seen that too. It's quite, it's very, very good at telling you, showing you the stuff that you need to actually know. Yeah. A lot of those movies. Are you just have to know to what's going on because yeah. it really jumps from scene to scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Like without the context, it's a bit confusing. But mm -hmm. uh, So yeah, I've been trying to absorb some, some Star Wars stuff. Uh, played a couple of games. Actually, I'll, uh, Gary, you could probably talk more about uh, Undertale. Because I played it a little bit. Yeah, I think you finished uh, it. Or... Don't you yeah. say anything no, no, about no, Undertale. Okay, just, <laughs> we won't spoil anything, but it's a really cool game. I feel yeah. like I don't want to say too much. This soundtrack is absolutely fantastic. 
I, Did you hear the the fan made one that was endorsed by Toby Fox? No, but I'm going. I've, I've heard good. of it, so I'm going to listen to that. I, you can listen to it all online. It's like good, super good. Good. So I will. Well, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing very soon. Then I'll definitely check <laughs> yeah. that out. So that was fun. I uh, played Downwell, which is great, awesome roguelike. That game is, just well, is amazing. So good. <laughs> Such a simple game, but man, is it freaking fun yeah i played that like it's all addictive like oh. for how simplistic that game is yeah. i there was one day where i sat there for like probably two hours playing mm-hmm. it yeah easy mm. so easy to do that um and then i uh continued to continue sucking at bloodborne uh but i <laughs> we but, challenged dungeon yeah gary yeah. and i challenged dungeon successfully it's actually a lot of fun i'm really excited for us we to gotta go to a harder one because that yeah. one was yeah, that those ones are real easy. Yeah, those, <laughs> those were dumb. We were having some struggles. It's not. It's still not the easiest to do, but it's a little bit easier than it was. Not the it, best quality of life, if you will. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's not the best quality of life. Stop for that. And then, <laughs> oh my god, that's never gonna disappear. Yeah. Anywho, um, so that was fun, and uh, I finally got to the point where I could get to the DLC, which is kind of nice because. It was taking me a while because New Game Plus is like just really that F is you gonna hard. wreck you, and you're gonna be like, oh, oh I'm I'm <laughs> I'm already feeling because I was doing fine until I got to that one enemy I told you guys about, um, and then it fucked me up real bad. I was like, oh jeez, I was like, it's like <laughs> no, that. That's thing. not even the bad well, no. one. That. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like that thing where it's just like it's like that thing in, in uh, Attack with, uh, in Attack on Titan when they're just like at that moment we realize how screwed we really were. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's pretty much what I'm feeling. So so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that was harsh. But yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it. Oh, and I watched The uh, uh, Man in High Castle, which is pretty interesting. Season one of that, I finally checked out. Um, and I started watching Gallivant, which that show's weird as hell. <laughs> um, uh, that show's basically like a medieval style, like humor musical. Um, I didn't think I'd like it, but it's really catchy. It. I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. What uh, no, it's it's real. I'd say give it a couple shots. The first episode is quite hilarious. It starts off very bombastically the musical, and then you kind of quickly realize that this weird medieval world is kind of anachronistic and a little bit messed up as well. Like they completely have a kind of fairy tale kind of going on about like a grave hero and how he saved the princess. Then evil king kind of kidnaps her, and he's like, and then she chose me, and then she's like, actually, I'm gonna go with the king. He's really rich. He's like, what? So it kind of. <laughs> turns that on its head i mean it's very still a kind of standard story but it's quite hilarious and the songs are very you had me at medieval musical yeah <laughs> like monty python yeah times a million <laughs> it, it, it kind of harkens back to that which is actually nice, kind of nice. like i mean it's not but it's not that but you're, yeah, you yeah you can see it harkening back to that for sure so I, you good. might like is that, it, a, so. is that a netflix thing or is that no i don't know i know it's not on netflix oh, okay so yeah but uh yeah so that's kind of been it for me um gary uh, I got Steam. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. so happy when you added me. That well, was exciting. Welcome to 2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing I did was play through Undertale. Which yeah. It, it was not what I expected at all. I'm so excited like, about that. The gameplay was entirely different than I thought. And it had so, it had a lot of Earthbound vibes to it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was its own thing. Like, you know how you play Sins of Earth and it's Earthbound vibes, but it's not its own thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's sheerly relying on that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this game really has its own thing going on, and it really relies on it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's cool because it sh- shakes your expectations so often. Well, I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's a reason why there's so much buzz about yeah. it, and it won all those awards yeah. and everything like that. And the music is great, oh and it, God, it is soundtrack. a fucking beast of a game. <laughs> I haven't I haven't beat the true ending yet, but mm-hmm. like, oh man, it's yeah. so good so far. <laughs> the soundtrack yeah. really plays on like uh, certain emotional parts too are so powerful because of the soundtrack. Yeah. Like wow. and there's there's some characters that like I I absolutely love mm-hmm. like I'm just gonna say it's a robot <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's my yeah. favorite character yeah. in the world yeah. that guy cool. that guy's my buddy cool and he it's like there's crazy backstory for like so many of the characters too that it's mm-hmm. just like hidden in there and yeah it's it's Subtext. so fascinating um, aside from that I played through all Bloodborne as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the DLC. <laughs> oh my god. So I've I've had a bit of a catching up on gaming. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but awesome. he, wow, that that game. I already said a lot about it, but like the monsters in the DLC are just oh man, they are they're night- a whole other they level. are nightmare <laughs> fuel. Like oh god, I and can't but wait. the bosses are just so dynamic and like interesting in the DLC that it's like wow. 
this is this it, they really put a lot of work into it you could tell mm-hmm. and the new items and stuff like everything's cool mm-hmm. so go buy the dlc if you have the game <laughs> it's very good <laughs> if you don't have the game go buy the game and the dlc yeah go do both <laughs> and play through them all at once like i yeah. did um uh, i wish i would love to do that <laughs> Uh, I bought Amplitude and started playing that too, because yeah. that's a wicked game. I am very uh, jealous of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of, like, it's good. I'm kind of disappointed because it doesn't have, like, the s- more poppy sound selection that it used to. Oh, okay. Like, the sort of Blink-182s and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Like, it's all, it's all essentially, like, techno. Te- techno dubstep, all that stuff. Yeah, it's all, like, it's all, like, electronic music. Now, have and you read into it? Have they do they have any plans for DLC or anything? I like hope that? they do, but there's like a user <laughs> there's a user level thing that users can make levels. So oh, really? From what I can tell, I just unlocked it, so I don't really know what it is. That's but, kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. From what I can tell, that exists. So I hope like you that get a lot gets of possibilities big. in that, depending on what they what they allow yeah. to happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but otherwise, it's it's amplitude. Yeah, everything you would wanted. If you're into techno music, nice, it. nice tight controls, good yeah, levels, yeah. like kind of the design of the visuals and, and everything. They 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 made up for the um, sound system lag that most most consoles have with like. A, oh, cool! That's awesome. By having like a the thing to recalibrate. Well, it's the same, it's the same yeah. thing like Rock Band. You yeah, go yeah. the options. Oh, they have okay. a calibration yeah. thing, and you like can calibrate it however. So, yeah, and that's nice too. That's awesome. And yeah, uh, aside from that, watching new anime seasons. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I forgot that just started. Yeah, I know, right? Holy <laughs> shit! Uh, and essentially, there's like four pretty good ones so far. Oh, that, that sounds like a lot of anime. Well, but I'm not gonna, good. I'm not gonna mention them. <laughs> yeah. One is just like essentially an advertisement for Japanese candy, <laughs> which is like the like I, I love it. It's the best thing in the world to me. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> Amazing. But, yeah, that that's essentially all I've been doing. Cool. Um, yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you actually got some gaming done. Yeah, finally. Kidding. Yeah, right. That's been tough. It's, it's getting a little dry there. The last oh, yeah, the last like so last like ten podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so uh, busy. So it's nice that you get a chance to like lay back and play some. Yeah, because we were at the Christmas place I work was actually you. closed for like two weeks, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Like, I had time. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. All right, guys, I think we did it. We Woo! did it. Holy shit. All right, well. Just short two and a half. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's it. We're, we're, we're officially back. I hope you've been enjoying the, the episodes of this week. I I hope you really enjoyed the, the Christmas episodes. We certainly enjoyed making Yeah, those were fun. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I love the themed ones. They're so much fun to do. Yeah, yeah I know, awesome. right? They're so awesome. The art and the editing. we got to play guys. a bunch of romance games for... Yeah, Valentine's, oh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Is coming so up. So Looking forward to that. <laughs> Looking forward to that. That would be great. Had a full boyfriend. Here I come. Finally. Uh, play some honey pop. In oh my god, I want, to, I want my husband do bird. <laughs> <laughs> if only my heart had wings. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great, guys. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, well, anyways, that's stuff to look forward to. But yeah, so this was basically giant Star Wars spoiler episode. So I hope you were stuck with us to this point because you've seen Star Wars already. If you haven't, um, well, you're not hearing this. So <laughs> uh, yeah. So what are your thoughts? Um, obviously, we agreed with with each other on a lot of the stuff throughout the movie because we thoroughly enjoyed what it was. There's a lot of people who are arguing against some of those points, but uh, yeah, we just kind of put them out there. So if you have any kind of different views on it or you just want to drop in a comment about uh, maybe something we missed or a character that you enjoyed that we missed or something like that. Yeah, go for it. Throw it down in the comment section there. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, until uh, till next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Left there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. KitaCast out. I thought you were going to say nothing like in the movie. <laughs> and then be like, ah, oh, that's a Spencer Nesta. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs>